We'll call the uh, select board meeting to order. First up is public comment. Just comment on anything not on the agenda. Seeing nobody coming off mute, John. All right. Uh, good evening. Um, so my name is John Kaplan, for the record, I guess. Um, so uh, I just wanted to publicly, I guess, state my opinion about the police district. But well, that's um, a topic on the agenda. Well, I mean, there People is a budget. People to speak to it then. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Pardon? We're going to talk about the police. Yeah. I'm, can I just, I mean, I do have a conflict also that starts at 6 o'clock, so I was hoping to. Well, we're going to come right down through the agenda, and we should get to it before then. Yep. Okay. Any other comments about something not on the agenda? Seeing none, approval of the agenda, and the one change that we'd like to make is uh, swapping the highway and the police fund order. You just read my mind. I will, I will so move. See, you should have my name tag. <laughs> Second. Oh. All those in favor? <laughs> Aye. Oh, I, um, Opposed? Motion carries consent calendar. I'll move that we approve the consent calendar. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Under business, first up is the RACDC Neighborhood Development Area Designation Expansion. I see two RACDC accounts on. I'm guessing one of them is Julie. Yes. Yeah. My name is Julie and uh, my colleague Diane Nelligan, who's going to walk through the, um, the proposal that she put together, I believe. So, Diane, are you you're muted? So. Mm. Oh, she can't hear me. Nope. Well, I can do it if she can't get on. So, but I know she's probably more prepared than I am. So basically, we're requesting um, and have prepared the amendments for the addition of a few parcels to the neighborhood development area that was proposed by and approved by the select board and ultimately the state. Um, I think it was finalized in 2021. Um, as you probably know, the neighborhood development area is one of those areas like the downtown uh, designation area that confers certain benefits to projects within those designation areas. One of the benefits conferred, especially for priority housing projects, is exemption from Act 250 jurisdiction in those areas. Uh, we're working on a project now involving um, project uh, owned by us at Heading Drive, plus two parcels that are currently owned by Capstone as affordable housing that we would incorporate into this upgrade and new construction. And those, uh, one of those is in the NDA designation, one of those is just outside it. And for the purposes of these projects, every parcel in the project needs to be within the NDA in order to be eligible for exemption from Act 250. So um, we're asking that the boundary be extended to include 18 Forest Street, which is two properties away from the existing boundary. And then on Heading Drive, for some reason, one of the pieces um, of the Heading Drive, the current Heading Drive um, parcel is in there, but part of the other piece is not. So we're asking that that, um, that piece be included, the, the whole boundary on that piece be included as well. Um, and I think we've, we've been in touch with the state. They think that this is a, a not a problem. They're actually, um, they didn't see any um, issue with that being approved by their board if the select board approves it. And um, just uh, one final mention about this project. This project would ultimately in two phases involve the rehabilitation of 25 units of housing that hasn't been upgraded in between 30 and 40 years in some cases, and the creation of 28 new units um, as well. And if anybody's got any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Just we pulled this up. This is the heading parcel Julie described right that's here. It. Yeah, yeah. That's and here's the, one. the forest one here. These light blue lines give you the yeah. amended boundary proposal. <clears throat> 
So it sounds like it comes under the category of, well, of course we should do this. Um, but I do have a question, which is, I'm not sure if, if, if Julie or Trevor is the right person, but maybe, well, maybe both of you, but there's, there's a lot of what seem to be like sort of neighborhood type areas, which are not included in the NDA. Um, mm -hmm. And it's just, it just, the boundaries just seem kind of odd in terms of why they stop, where they, where they stop. And, and I, I know we're not, we're obviously not going to fix this or do anything about it tonight, but I'm just sort of wondering if we know anything about the rationale for, for why some of these areas weren't included and if, and if, and if there is a, a, a argument to be made for looking at this and, and what the possible, you know, if there's any benefits to looking at expanding those areas, yeah. given, given the benefits that, that these areas do have that, that Julie just um, talked about. Um, I, I could take, I mean, I could give you my answer to that. Um, the, um, I think when this was being done, um, it was brand new and it wasn't 100% understood, I think, what those, what those benefits would be. And in fact, some of the benefits have expanded since we started this work. So for now and maybe in the future, the NDA areas are also going to be eligible for the downtown tax credits. And so it's kind of an evolving thing. And I think one of the reasons the heading drive parcel wasn't in there, for example, is that um, was that it was assumed that there was already uh, something on there and it couldn't be expanded, but rehabs count. You can you can get you know exemption for rehabilitation as well. So I think absolutely this could be looked at again um, with that you know with what we know now in mind, and um, you know open it up to d discussion in those other areas because those weren't in the hearing when this was proposed. Um, but yeah, I, we, and we'd be happy to, to be involved in that because I think there are, you know, benefits outside maybe the existing lines that, that might be worth looking into. Yeah, we can look into it, see what the benefit be, the why not. I mean, because we've got, you know, with the heading drive one, for example, we create this odd shape and leave just kind of, <laughs> kind of one lot there. Mm -hmm. um, same thing, I mean, you see there's all kinds of little little gaps that you could fill in depending on which way you want to go. Yeah. There's With a sizable it. development on the other side of heading too, if it's rehab, yeah. that oh, yeah. development yeah. on the other side should have been in there. Yeah. Yeah, there are reasons for some of it, like what that is commercial, that little parcel on the corner, which probably wouldn't um wouldn't reap the benefits, you know. So some of this there is a rationale for. <laughs> some of it maybe it was just like we didn't know at the time, but I think revisiting it would, would certainly be uh, a worthwhile thing. We hope that you would approve the amendment tonight because we have an immediate need to to go through that process um, in order to um, be eligible and competitive for some of the upcoming funding we're going to apply for for this particular project. Who was involved in getting this expansion to this point? Uh, the expansion we're proposing, that was our request because of this project. The original so the one was... Wasn't, the, has the planning commission been at the table for this? Uh, I don't, we, we conferred with Mark, so I don't know if the planning commission was also involved, but in the original uh, one, it was Josh, mostly Josh, I think in the, um, I'm not sure if the planning commission was involved in that one either. So they haven't weighed in at all on this change? Well, I think, I, I'll take that back. I think they might've been involved in the original one, but I, they ha I don't know if Marcus con has conferred with them on this one. This one. I don't think so based on the timing no. and not, I mean, not meeting schedule. Not the commission as a whole. And, and yeah. Well, Mark wasn't <clears throat> even involved until late. So this had already gotten quite a ways through the process by the time Mark got told about it, which is concerning. It's a town plan, a town designation, and we find out just before it's ready to be approved. Is it a change of use? It's a change of designation. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's a. Um, it would have been nice to have the more holistic look at it. So. 
That would be a bad idea to wrap it into some of the town, because we're, you were saying what, last time, last week, we were, we're getting close to town plan revamp time. Mm -hmm. So this might be the kind of thing that fits well yeah. within that framework, since <coughs> the, the two are designed to work some level of concert with one another. Yeah, agreed. And there are some things that certainly, you know, the NDA would look at, like, um, it looks at sidewalks where the town might say, well, in that area, we don't want to expand sidewalks, but the state would want us to. That was some of the rationale, I think, in some of these areas. In this case, there's already sidewalks where we will build them in those areas. So it's not like we're not, we didn't see any trip wires in the original intent of the original application that would make this something that, you know, would it be a head scratcher at all? It was just they missed the boundary by like one, two lot lines. Do you have any other areas that you're planning to try to pull into this or into any of the other designations? Um, I think the, the downtown designation would be very difficult to change. We haven't thought about that too much in a while, but it'd probably be worth looking at. Um, we don't have any immediate um, uh, thoughts about that. There's some parcels that I think are up in the air about potential development areas that might be outside the boundary, but I, I do think it's a worthwhile thing to look at, especially now that um, you know we'll know more, especially this session, about what the legislature intends to do going forward with this designation, like whether the tax credits are going to be a, a more permanent benefit here and things like that. Um, so yeah, I think I think we don't have anything specific that we're thinking of beyond this. Um, and initially, we, were, we weren't aware that all of the parcels had to be in the NDA to be eligible for those benefits. So, um, so we don't have anything else now, but I think it's definitely worth looking at. I think so too. I think the planning commission probably ought to have this one when they do the town plan. As you said, the town plan, then look at all these other special designated areas and how those all fit in. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any other questions from the board? None from the board. Any questions? None online. I'll make a motion to approve the amended NDA boundaries to include the two parcels listed. I will second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next up is the police fund. Thank you, folks. Appreciate it. Thanks, Julie. Thanks, Julie. Bye bye, Julie. So I'll just uh, scroll down and we'll stay up and running. Scott, I think I saw you jump on. There's an indication proof of life. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm alive. <laughs> Scott is home ill. He's unable to be with us, but he's in physically, but he's here with us digitally and certainly in spirit. Um, so tonight, barely hanging on. I'm barely hanging on. So be nice. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Playing on our sympathy, huh? <laughs> so. Tonight, for your continued budget review, we scheduled Police Highway and the Capital Improvement Program. Um, you amended the order a little bit so that we could get Scott on and through. So the Police District um, budget is the one that we're starting with, just to go back to the same summary sheet that you've had before. Um, this is the budget approved last May, I think we ended up doing this, our startup foundational budget. And then um, here is what's proposed for fiscal 25 in total. You can see the different categories. Administrations where most of the personnel costs are. It's understandably the largest. The operation uh, hits sort of other areas of need, such as uniforms, training, um, general liability insurance, um, dispatch, and a whole host of other costs. And the $25,000 in other, when we get into the lines, will be for that proposed transfer to the capital reserve. You'll see this in the capital table later. It fits into other conversations we've had. We know two of those vehicles are toward the end of their useful life, would really need replacement in fiscal 25 to stay on those types of schedules. 
$25,000 will be the first $25,000 into the police reserve, so there's not enough to buy $135,000 worth of vehicle fully outfitted. Um, so we've got in the capital plan showing that as ARPA funds as was proposed in December. If we don't go that route, we'd have to figure something else out. Most likely you're looking at some sort of debt financing uh, and how we pay for that would be part of that task. Um, this adds two officers from the current footprint. So just so everybody sort of starts, there's chief, two officers, and Rose, who's the dispatch admin. This would add two more full-time level three certified police officers to mix. So we'd have chief, four officers, and Rose. Four all full-time. Yeah. There's a little bit of part-time capacity still left in the budget for whomever fills those roles at lower rates. We haven't seen um, great utilization of that um, just from personnel interest hours kind of standpoint, but we kept them in there so there's at least that capacity to fill a random Friday night shift, for example. This is a essentially the same version the police committee has looked at. The number's lower. I'll get into sort of why that is different, but it's basically the same existing district model that the committee's been looking at since September of October. Um, and so they've looked at three models. The existing district is this footprint. What we have now, there was the expanded and then there were the townwide. Those were the versions that were shown at the forum. Um, so this is a little different. It gets into the non-tax revenue side as to why this was in some timing related to <coughs> one of the two cops um, in terms of when they join on. And so I'll just get down into the lines there. We can go through that. And then, Scott, at any point, if there's something you want to point out or jump in on, don't be afraid to shout over me here. If you can. <laughs> yeah. if, you, if you're able, yeah. Uh, I'll try my best. Yeah. So much like we did last week, start on the revenue end. Like every other budget we have, most of the revenue comes from property taxes, um, and the rest of it's made up of, in this case, non-police district revenue. The reason I say that is because the general fund payment for services that's shown right here, these are all taxpayer dollars, property tax dollars as well. Um, so it balances that. This is the amount of the budget. You know, this amount is subtracted from the overall budget amount. It gives you the to be raised by taxes number there. So it's about $134,000 change. There's a slight increase in this. We carry this just as um, sort of an example as part of the conversations that have evolved. The committee, when it was talking about its recommendations, landed on a number closer to this. So for a question for the board is to, if you go with this proposal, do you want to leave these numbers where they are? Do you want to do something different there? Um, special policing uh, gets into if we are hired out for events, any sort of other um, traffic details, anything else we're able to. Again, some of our ability to collect some of this revenue depends on having those bodies. Fingerprinting, we've been really good at um, being able to make some money there. Special detail reimbursement, we participate in Governor's Highway Safety Program. So when you look at the actuals, you'll see some money drop into there, um, sort of event staffing. Contracts for service, we've kept it there. We'd like to be able to do a little more of that um, if we can. And then the COPS grant, these are $125,000 maximum awards. Um, you've got three years to spend the money in order to try to mitigate this impact here. This budget proposes using most of that funding in fiscal 25. The idea being that we've prioritized getting to that four officer footprint. One of the things the police committee looked at as part of its work and that we've looked at internally, Scott has done, I don't even know how many different iterations of schedules showing how we would cover seven days a week in any model with what number of officers. If you put four officers in there and a couple of shifts for the chief, you can make a seven day a week, not 24 seven, mind you, model work with four plus chief. Somebody gets sick, which we've experienced. Somebody goes on vacation, we have a vacancy. Now you've got white spaces in that schedule. So these are the minimum staffing levels in a lot of ways. They do fit what we saw when we talked to other communities, benchmark data, per capita data. When we talk to St. Albans and you talk about what you spend per capita, we're actually a little bit lower than their number. Um, so we get into the expenditure end here. This is the officers plus chief. They're all right there, including the part-timers. Um, we've got admin dispatch there for Rose. Um, the increase there is tied to those different pieces. So we're carrying the COPS grant will cover, um, you know, 
know, that, that amount across sort of those employee categories. So that's salary, health insurance, retirement costs, all of those pieces that it's helping to cover. We're starting the fourth officer in January 1 <coughs> in this model, much like we did in the current budget with the planning and zoning position, so that we can try to wiggle a little bit of extra capacity out of this in terms of mitigating how we mitigate impact. Um, over time, it's just an assumed factor as we gain more data on what we're doing. More officers hopefully means less overtime, um, but we're still trying to work this number out as we go. The insurance opt-out, this ties into if you don't take our health insurance you're eligible, and you have coverage somewhere else, you're eligible for an opt-out payment. They vary based on whether you'd be on a family plan, a two-person plan, or a single plan. So we have one employee opting out who would otherwise be on a family plan. We like these because at $4,500, we get to thank the employee for being on insurance in some other manner because otherwise that family plan is going to be about a $34,000 expense for us to cover our premium share. Um, so we make out well in that deal. As you can see here on the health end, this is where this is fully illustrated. We've budgeted a mix of plans. We have um, at least two folks on family plans. We've got a couple of folks budgeted for two-person plans, and we've got one person budgeted for a single plan. So that would be a fairly representative sample. The danger in that is that if we don't <coughs> find a cop on a single plan, and we're providing health insurance at the more expensive rate, that's tied to the six-month-a-year position, too. So some of that is mitigated a little bit um, with that. We budget health insurance in two chunks, six months based on the actual cost, six months based on an assumed increase. So this is done just the same way that we do it for all the other employees with that piece there. Retirement, we're at that 21.4% is so our employer contribution because we're in the state employees system. So that's why that number is larger than you might see in, if you looked at somebody else's police budget and they're in the Beamer system where the contribution rate could be between 8 and 10%, say, depending on which group they're in. Um, and then workers' compensation numbers, those are from VLCT. They're based on our anticipated payroll. It's a per 100 metric. We are lucky in that we don't have any sort of negative claims history that would affect our experience rating. That's one of the benefits of bringing brand new. But if somebody goes to the academy, gets hurt, hurts a shoulder, this seems to be a common occurrence. Um, there's some workers' comp costs. We get to pay for that for the following three years. Um, so this is just at where we're at based on um, where we're starting. And we generally see we've got a pretty good experience right now. We're pretty close to that one target figure that they want you to be. A little bit less than that, you're on the good side of it. A little bit the higher you go up in that number, the more expensive it's going to be. General insurance costs. This is our general property casualty liability insurance, again, through VLCT, through PASSIF, the, the fund. Um, then you get into some of our operating lines from here. There aren't really any changes from those prior budgets. Um, you can see some go up, some go down. Um, vehicle fuel, just if we've got more cops, we're going to be on the road more often. Um, you'll see this in Highway 2. One of the things we switched out that I want everybody to remember, this year we're using sort of historical averages. Next year we'll have a full year plus with our new fuel system which lets us know by vehicle, by user, by time. We'll be able to really accurately say what's our usage and assign those costs, which helps when we want to bill, say, the school um, for the fuel that it uses. Because so I think we've, we suspect based on early returns on the data, we've been subsidizing fuel use for a little while, um, fairly substantially, um, with the old system that wasn't as accurate. So nothing crazy in the budgets, but we'll see a little bit probably come back. The contracted services, this big, this is where um, we put the money to work with, say, Clara Martin Center for a crisis response worker uh, and to pay for some of the costs incidental to that. That's been the number we've carried since early on in the conversation. Mm -hmm. It's there for the forum, came out after we talked to St. Albans City about their program there. Um, so one of the things that we need to clarify on that, that's not to actually pay for the worker. That's to pay for the extra training and gear they would need. The worker themselves would be paid for, hopefully, by Clara Martin Center. So um, the other misconception that's in, out there quite a bit is that it would replace an officer. It will not replace an officer. It's in addition to. So we're not going to gain any staff hour savings with that person, it's just an additional service being provided at the call. 
Supplemental, not supplanting, was the thing we heard when we talked to St. Albans, for example. Um, the rest of the costs, there are more marginal. We, we know better what things cost us. You'll see the repair and maintenance for the building. It's an older building. It's got a lot of needs. We've done everything from door casings to, to lights to plumbing-related stuff, I believe. Um, and so we, older buildings in that state require more maintenance, so that helps us get all of that done. Dispatch, we've got a little bit of an increase sort of factored in. i got to fix, go back and make sure that all of these formulas are working. These are still newer lines, um, but a little bit of an increase there. Um, just because we're expecting a, a small one based on that. This keeps us with Barry City. We've talked about um, potentially switching. We've been approached by some of the other dispatch units, but Barry City took us in when we didn't have a home. And like I said last week, that, that counts for something. Um, and then $25,000 is that capital transfer. And so that's how you get to 721-838. So the real big change from what we're living under now to what this proposes to do is those two officers. Um, like I said, $25,000 starts that equipment reserve, but at $25,000, it's probably three fiscal years before we got enough money to replace a vehicle. We know that we've got two due. So that probably gets us to the replacement date for the one that we have that we bought new or thereabouts. We really should increase it incrementally if we can over the next couple of years. Um, but we'll have to figure out how to pay for those two new vehicles at some point. And so operationally, yeah, existing district, Scott can answer any questions you have about what we do, how we do it, where we do it. Um, but those are the basic pieces. I think it's also good that if, uh, if Scott could, if he could explain kind of why the additional two officers are needed just to cover the services you're doing today. Sure. So even with just three officers going on right now, I mean, there's there's holes in the schedule. I mean, honestly, we're only on until at least 10 o'clock at night. Um, with no coverage from 10 p.m. to uh, about 7.30, um, with an additional officer that will give us coverage to at least uh, zero two. And also on the weekends, they're, they're shy. I've got both my guys working every other weekend, um, you know, but it's a split shift model. Uh, so your hours are not covered in any shape or form. The other end of it is sickness. Uh, case in point, today, uh, I'm home with COVID, and we had a call at the school for a kid with a gun. I had to call out Chelsea because she was about three hours before the start of her shift, and she had to come out and deal with that awesomeness. It's coverage pieces is kind of what we're looking at in regards to the additional two officers. You know, at some point, we're going to have to try to think about, um, you know, how, allowing officers to take time off. You know, so we want to alleviate any burnout. If an officer takes time off, currently in this model, what we got going on, um, that means there is nobody covering the shift at all. Um, so we're, we're less than bare bones with this current model with three officers. But there's a lot of overtime hours right now also with the count that you have correct so, yes so i mean i'm doing a lot of the overtime um you know and i'm taking a you know else in comp time so i'm really kind of getting boned with it but it is what it is the other end of it is you know it's it's that coverage you know um where it's not just an officer safety piece it's more of an officer safety piece all the way around but having those additional officers would be um, a huge cost benefit for that uh, overtime. And so we've seen um, some folks express opinions that we don't need any more officers, but we could go townwide. What would that do to you and your staff if you became the primary law enforcement agency with no additional staff for the entire town? So, I mean, if this model isn't working for a two square mile area, how is it going to work for a townwide model? Um, you're adding almost 1,100 calls, you know, per VSP. They what they do in the actual town 
on top of the 1700 calls that we did in the village alone, um, you're just asking for officers to burn out faster than anything else. It's near impossible for a timeline coverage with only three officers. Yep, agreed. This fits a through thread that we started last year when we were talking about the amended budget. That, that was building the foundation at some point. That house was going to need walls, going to need a roof, going to need windows in the form of officer counts. This was the yep. number that was highlighted in the original draft. It's the number we keep coming back to. It's the number of the benchmark support. It's the number the committees come up with. And it's still just scraping our belly on the on the runway trying to get in the air. Um, <coughs> Can I ask a question? Yep, go ahead, John. That 1,100, did I hear Scott say 1,100 calls by the state police in Randolph? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, when we did the tallies for the year for both Randolph PD and also VSP, uh, their total for calls was service in the town of Randolph was uh, approximately 1,100 calls. But is that, like, would that include, like, a stop they made on the interstate that happens to be in Randolph? Mm -hmm. uh, I could go through the data. Some of them were, tra a lot of them were traffic stops, but a lot of them are, I mean, for out of 1,100 calls, it's not that much for traffic stops on the interstate that happen to be in Randolph. Okay. So the one piece that I, needs I to become key in a bit, in the one piece that folks keep forgetting is as soon as we vote to go townwide, Scott's group is primary. State police are no longer primary. I understand All that. those calls become his. And so it's a question of if suddenly that volume mm -hmm. is his to manage, is he set up for success or is he set up for quicker burnout? Right, but the state police would still respond if it were something not just a traffic stop. Depends what it is and how quickly they would respond. Maybe a murder. Okay. Yeah. Something uh, so how much serious crime do we have? I mean, that's kind of the question. That's just it. That's just it. We yeah, don't, we, we don't have serious crime that, that in any great length outside, exactly. outside the district. So, hence... If you look at it and, and actually break down that data and 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 see it, then, then you then you'd know that then you well know that. And we've seen that data on, on, on the committee, if you if you will. I think it depends how you define serious crime. We have a lot of activity in town, but we have a lot of activity that the state police wouldn't respond to. Instead, they would put it on a list, and when Scott comes in in the morning, they'll give him that <coughs> list to respond to. So now he's got the next day's calls plus backlog. That so they... can I just ask one more question? Yep. Yeah. Um, so currently, like in this fiscal year, there's $100,000 from the general fund. In other words, people both inside the police district and outside that is going towards the police. So if a call comes in now that's outside the police district, Scott's responding to it, right? Not always. And He's just, not the primary right now. And state outside police the is. district. Correct. The state huh? police would respond. If they can't respond, they'll reach out to, to Scott and ask him to respond. I understand it's a choice. It's not a requirement. It's a choice. What, what do you mean by that? What I mean by that is the state police call and say, <clears throat> hey, could you help us out here? The difficult part, part for me to understand is that if three officers cannot cover this town in the original district and there's a need for five officers to cover the, in the original district, how do we make the choice to respond when there's an accident on the highway and I happen to have see one in the last weeks, um, happen to see a, a young lady that went off into the medium, the state police were there in about seven minutes, mm -hmm. followed up by another state trooper in that time. In that time, so I think it's somewhat selective 
on, on, on that regard. Yeah, I guess so. What I was going to say at the start, and I'll just, I won't, miss, maybe I'll say the whole thing, but, you know, obviously I am in favor of a townwide police department because I think that is the equitable way to do it. I don't think it's ever going to be the ideal time where we can ramp up from where we are now to eight to ten officers or whatever. I forget what the number was for a townwide that was in the police committee's proposal. Eight. Eight, eight full time. So, you know, with new building, vehicles, blah, blah, blah. I understand there's all those expenses. You know, I still think, you know, what you're asking taxpayers to do with the budget as proposed, if you're in the police district, for a $350,000 house, which is, or property, which is the um, average for Randolph, um, you know, if you're in the police district, you're gonna be paying about $1,200, which includes your 98 from the general fund. And if you're outside, you're gonna be paying $98 versus at the proposed budget, which is the chief and four full time, if it went townwide, it would be four hundred and fifty-six dollars for that same value property, which is thirty-eight dollars a month. And I know I've heard speculation about whether that would pass as a vote or not, but I don't think there's ever going to be a way to know that for sure up front. No one's going to ever be able to guarantee that until the select board decides that townwide is the way to go and puts a budget together for that and puts it out to the town to vote. I think you can speculate one way or the other, but you'll never know up, up front whether that's going to pass or not. I'm not in support of that, and I'll tell you why. We are setting Scott and his guys up for failure, and we will not have a police department if we take this budget and mandate that he cover the entire town with it. It will not do it. But I guess I don't, I haven't seen, I, I don't think it's been explained why that, why you feel that. Like, why do you say that? Because under the existing budget, that's just going to give him what he needs to cover the town in the inside the district. Without For 24-7 coverage. No, no. no. It's never been modeled on that, John. But you just said for the, that this chief plus four officers mm -hmm. is enough to make a 24-7 no. schedule. No, I said not 24 hours. It's seven days a week, but not 24 okay. hours. Okay, I misheard you then. Yes, you did. Can I, can it's I a call? lot of open space. And now if you take that number of officers and you have to cover townwide, you're in even more gaps. But, yeah. I just don't, I, I, go, I don't feel like people have been presented the data to support that. I don't understand what. I, I, can I speak? I know I'm not in the room, but I've had my hand up here and I would like to speak. Yeah, you, in a just second, and we got people here. Okay. This part, but. So I can tell you in the committee, we met and we talked about a lot of this stuff. And a lot of these details come in. And the problem we have right now is we don't have enough employees in the department right now to meet the demand of in the village only. I understand that. And so, well, then now multiply that out across the whole town. How do you think you're going to do that with the same number of officers? But the proposed budget allows for two additional officers. It does, but that's not, that's just going to meet what's the demand in the village. I, I hear what you're saying. Yep. So if I now say you got to cover the entire town, I'm right back to not enough mm -hmm. resources, too much demand, plus I've eliminated the state police as the primary responder. Right. So it's kind of like expanding a school district, if you think of it in that way. So all of a sudden, instead of just having the kids in the school district in the village, we're going to have the kids in the whole entire town come to one building. But we're not going to increase staff. We're not increase building mm -hmm. space. We're not going to give them extra school supplies. We're just going to expect them to meet the demands of everybody instead of just the smaller area and be their primary. And so you're creating a situation where you're not providing the support needed. And then you put on top of it that it's a life and death situation at points, right? I mean, today with the school is a perfect situation where there's a gun in the school. I mean, that needs demand. I mean, you're just putting our officers in these situations and burning them out and expecting them to perform well. It's not 
just it's not an easy job to have in the first place, let alone mm -hmm. adding way more responsibility and not giving them any support. And I, I will go back to, I do, I have not heard, I'm hearing there's this huge demand in the village, but what I'm hearing is there was a one, I'm hearing there's no crime outside of the village, and yet I'm hearing we had a hundred or a thousand, eleven hundred calls outside of the village. I I don't I don't know what to believe in terms of what the demand is because it it doesn't seem a hundred percent clear. I don't know if we need twenty four seven coverage. We haven't had that in the police district, is what I'm hearing. And so do we need it? Do we need it? I mean, Joe himself will say we don't really need 24-7 coverage outside of the police district. And in my own communications with the police barracks in South Royalton, what I found out was, yes, our police department would would be the primary, but if they need support from the police department, they will come they if they can. And sometimes it's more, it depends. Again, they're gonna probably do a little triage. And if it's something that's super serious, they will drop things and come. If it's not, they're gonna they're and and the reality is no one has a full Cadillac budget, and it, the, even the the state police are struggling for staffing. So, I I the what I'm fundamentally arguing about is that we are we are choosing as a town to say that public safety from our police department needs to be primarily funded by a third of the taxpayers in the town and that we're gonna sort of piecemeal together coverage it allow it it makes it so those folks who are outside of the police district really don't get a whole lot of say in what's going on and it's very confusing and not very transparent and it i i don't know how, of course we don't know how many calls or what's going on outside of the the police police district because no one's really keeping very good data and right now we're saying that the police department doesn't really have to go outside of the police district because we don't they don't pay the primary portion of the service it, it's it's ludicrous and it's a community service everyone benefits from it and so we all ought to pull together and pay for it and yes joe that does mean it is a fi it partly a financial thing but i think you would agree that for a community service everyone should pay for it and i think we can make it a community service and i'm not saying we don't hire any more police officers but i also question whether or not we need eight full-time police officers we aren't living in a crime-ridden violent area so i mean there are some some things that we need to kind of balance out and lastly yeah. There was the, the there was not a student at the school with a gun. There was a student who reported that there might be. The school followed its safety protocols and investigated. It turned out there was no gun in the school. So 
there again, that's teaching students to act as a community. We're all here as a community. We're all going to protect one another. We're all going to look out for one another. And if we see something that is questionable, we're going to speak up and we're going to we're going to support each other. And that's what I'm asking this community and this select board to stand behind is I if Scott needs a few more officers, I'm willing to pay, but everyone in the community. And I think there's a way for us to support the whole town. It it uh, it's it's just like the roads. It's just I I don't I don't understand this. So anyway, that's where I stand. I still stand that way. I urge the select board to think about a full time townwide police department funded by everyone. Thank thank you. So Thanks for that budget for full time full time townwide. Mm -hmm. How much was that budget that was proposed? It was hang on a second. One million. It wasn't full time though. No. It was just uh, town wide. Yeah, the eight officers. Well, one point three million dollars. Would what? that include any extra cruisers? So that no. did not include the cruiser no cost, the building cost. Right. None of these include capital. So I just yeah. want to make sure this is crystal clear to the point of being repetitive. Nobody at any point has ever talked about a twenty four seven never. police department. That has never once been on the table. No. This is not a Cadillac. This is the 99 Corolla that won't die with good snow tires. That's what we're asking you to approve. The thing that will go as long as we need it to go. When we did the shift, when we did the shift modeling, please. When we did the shift modeling, if you have four officers seven days a week townwide, you don't have enough to cover the shifts from eight in the morning till two in the morning, which is when we cover most of the days. You need at least five different officers, or four different officers, five, I'm sorry, I got the count off, on each of those days, except on the weekends where you might scale it back. You can't just work one person seven days a week, four people, all of those shifts. So you need that just to provide the basic coverage in the hours we've been talking about all along. Agree. It's a 99 Corolla. When the engine light comes on, you keep driving and you ignore it because it's going to turn itself off the car keep going. That's what we're talking about. That's what we're asking for is the bare minimum to keep people safe and not burned out to do the freaking job. That's the number. How you pay for it, that's a policy and question. That's the number of officers to get the job done. And so um, I think part of the other first piece here we have is this committee did look at high users. We had those folks come in that had been expressed as being high users and what their use of the resources is. And we started the discussion with Lane because our officers have been at the school every day since school started about them getting a resource officer in. And I know they had the first hearing. It was mostly students that were in attendance. Um, it started as very negative and started to turn to a more positive discussion by the end of the meeting. But, you know, the conversation is taking place about the school hiring a resource officer, having somebody at the school to help deal with some of this stuff on a day-to-day -day basis, which would then free up hours for the, the work that the police department has to do. So, And that was kind of the idea of, like, the scaling it up, right? So we need to another amount of time to figure out if a resource officer is going to be hired, if Claire Martin's going to add people in to help us, right? And so that was kind of part of the conversation of, mm -hmm. like, if we did want to go town-wide, at some point, we would have some of those other supporting resources that would help our department. Yep. But that's going to take time. The recommendation from the committee was to go forth with the existing district budget at what Scott needed to survive but also put out to vote an expansion of the district and to expand their service and their area over time so we didn't take the bite and have responsibility for the whole <coughs> town at one time. At the same time, have some side discussions and there is a, I got an email from Corinth. Did you get it? In the town of Corinth? I don't think so. They're reaching out to town managers and select board chairs uh, to bring them together to talk about beefing up the Orange County Sheriff to get him back into a functioning mode, which we are not super, the committee was not very friendly about, but um, we did have the conversation about a more regional model 
for this. The state of Vermont towns cannot afford to pay their own police service and all of them have their own police departments and do this work themselves and and that's just a, a fact. Was there in the discussion about incremental growth was there a timeline set in place for when there might be a vote to expand the district and what the boundaries of that might be? The, the uh, proposal, the recommendation that came out to you a little bit late yesterday, but um, was to take the vote at town meeting day for the expanded district. And the committee needs to define those boundaries a little better because we think they're, they're kind of challenging the way they are going by property lines mm -hmm. and what we're looking at. But it was to move forward with the um, the budget for the district, but take the vote on town meeting day also to go to the expanded area, which is um, up to East Bethel Road and Randolph Center, Windover Road, <clears throat> to make that loop that they're doing anyway, mm -hmm. and then down to the Bethel line. So, if okay. that passed, then the question is out right now to attorneys on can we then take a vote for an amended budget that would go out to cover more resources to cover that area. So can you do that, kind of that budget for the existing and then amend that budget through some process to the, to cover the expanded area? Is the attorney also looking at, rather than taking an, ex, uh, uh, an added vote in this fiscal year, simply, and it could be, I would assume it could be built into the question, look at doing it in fiscal 26 rather than you know hurrying up and yeah we it. could definitely delay it we could yeah. take the vote to expand and have that expansion be effective in 26 that's what i'm getting the thought at. was that the areas that are being expanded are the businesses that are screaming for coverage mm -hmm. and are have a pretty high demand as it is so why not let them mm -hmm. help pay for it okay right. um you know you're talking about Shaw's, which is gets a fair number of calls, the barn. Those are the two big ones that mm -hmm. came up. You know, the hotel will go online. Gifford's facility up there has some Manic and, activity. And, uh, yeah. Um, so yeah. if you were gonna be providing that service, then why not try to capture them participating and paying yeah. for the That makes sense. Piece. That's the that's the only reason the thought was take a vote on expanding and then. So is the legal question really amending the budget? Is yeah. that is that what the lawyers or uh, yeah. the council's looking at? Okay. Yep. Can okay. you then go out with a vote to the expanded district to amend that budget? Mm -hmm. Yep. My question about <clears throat> the expanded district would be. It makes sense that we would want to include all those businesses and the and the property taxes that would help support the, 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 the police. Um, but those but those business owners might want it, but they're they're not going to vote on this. Right. We're going to have a very small number of residential properties. We're going to be the bulk of the voters. I I don't see it. It just seems to me that. Like why would why would these residential property owners choose to tax themselves um, to expand the district just a little bit? Um, they're not going to perceive any benefit. It would really be out of the goodness of their heart and their communal good nature. Um, and um, I'm not sure I see the, yeah. the the that trumping the the economics of it um, enough to get us uh, an expanded district. It's the process that's there. In the merger document, um, and it's what we. I, I used understand in the we past. can do it. I'm just. It's real. I would be well, extremely surprised if if we could make that happen. So if the people don't want it, you just made the case for that. If the people don't want the expansion in a, in a separate vote, then forcing it upon them isn't the wise thing to do. Let's let's talk about this a little bit, Larry. If it, if it goes town wide, your seven properties seek to reduce 
your taxes $2,770. Mr. Ayers is going to reduce your taxes $440. Have you looked at your conflict of interest po policy? I think you should look closely at that policy. I, this, I think this it's a piece of This is not a conflict of interest policy. This is not a conflict of interest I, I would suggest differently. However, that's your, opinion, my, that's your opinion, that's your opinion, my opinion. I, I it's don't. not an opinion. We've looked into conflict of interest many times right, right. since we've been on the board, and right. this is not one of those. <laughs> I, would, I, would, I would suggest differently. That's ridiculous. And we'll, let, we'll let the courts figure that out. That said, that said, the people, the people don't want it outside the district, and, and you're admitting to that. That's not, you know, quite, that's, that's not the point that I was making. Mm -hmm. The point that I would be making is, if you're a person who lives on the boundary, basically, right now, you would be asked to shoulder an additional amount that should be shouldered by the entire town. Mm -hmm. But you would be doing that on your own. And so people's basic sense of fairness would not allow them to say, well, why should I do this when my neighbors who also live in town, who also benefit from the police, who live next door, why are they not paying for it? So but if we went to the whole town, yeah, hang on, the, no. the, 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 the fairness of it completely changes around. So That's let's talk, my point. Let's talk fairness, Larry. Are the buses driving the kids over the hill for recreation from East Randolph? What? No. Why aren't they? Because the people here can walk to recreation. We get a swing set. Uh, are they collecting trash in East, in East Randolph in trash barrels? But they're collecting it here in the town, yet we're paying for it from outside they're of the not town. It so, 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 tell, tell me where, where fairness so really, really gets in there. Are you running no, water the water pipe? No, it's not a meter service, I think it's right. not a meter service. So, 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 yeah. so yeah. you're <laughs> talking about fairness here. Yeah. When you, when you bought right your off. houses, <laughs> did you know you had to pay this police tax? If not, then you get it, you ought to get a new lawyer. That, that said, I bought my house knowing I wasn't in the police district. Right. What you're looking to force upon people, and that's what I see what's happening, what you're looking, what you're looking to force upon people mm -hmm. is for a service they're not asking for. No one, the, people no one from outside forcing anything. Thing. It would be a town-wide vote. That's, that's it. It should be a separate vote on the expanded district, not a town-wide vote. Because who in the town would not vote to reduce their taxes? It's not going to reduce. If you look at the cost of the budget and the expenses associated with a townwide police district, all the taxes are going up. Right. Well, they're going so up anyway. Even if as, you're as, in as, the as district. our legislature is kind of, <coughs> kind of emanated. So, yeah, the, you know, the problem is, is, is not policing, the problem is budget. The problem is, is all of a sudden folks figured out that they can't afford things. Well, I think Maybe you should take that back to the really, state. It really has come <laughs> to a head because costs have increased so much. And if we take the numbers that were there before, that we're looking at for this proposed budget for five officers, I think that's gonna be a pretty hard sell to, for the members of the district. We saw a very similar budget not pass last year. And why, why would a new budget that does the same thing why would we think that that's going to pass? We're in a very tough spot. You would hope that there is a greater understanding of how we're operating and how we need to operate, whereas last year's, the whole thing launched and had to get airborne in a relatively short mm -hmm. period of time. Amen. And you've got the police that's, services committee that's now put in 15, 17 meetings. I, I'm not I saying think, this is the magic bullet, I, but the I, field is very different. Yeah, Orange no, County Sheriff is I'm, not an option. The state police haven't I'm, staffed up. Yeah, you, you, might, you might be right, but I, my, I have my, no idea. It's just yeah, it's a different yeah, field. No, I understand, but yeah. my, my sense of why that budget didn't pass was that was, was two, was two, was there were two parts. One was it's just a lot of money to ask people to come up with in addition to what, you know, the increase over what people have been paying. And then the other part was this perception that people in the district are paying for a service that benefits the entire town, and it's a lot of money. And people are like, well, this, is, this just isn't fair, and I don't want to vote for something that really um, gets at my sense of the justice of the situation. Not, not me personally, I'm just saying that's the, what people are feeling. And those things have not changed, mm -hmm. and that's what makes me very concerned 
that we could put together, a, a, a put a budget in front of the police district that, that won't pass. One of the things that is different is that we know from a year of operation, trying to continue with the foundational model, deviating from the models that we've laid out, the schedules for the committee piece, that doesn't work. That's not sustainable. So the cost is what the cost right. is. But we, we knew we knew that that wasn't footprint. going to be sustainable when we put it in place. We did, setting up this very conversation. But we felt like we had no choice because we had a budget that just went down. And, uh, and no other options for right. policing. Yeah. Right. But I, what I'm saying is I think this part, we're in the same spot. Maybe you're right and we're not. Maybe there's some perception on yeah. the part of the public that's changed. But I, wrong, yeah. I'm just not. See, I'm just not seeing it. It's my yeah. my understanding. I'm not trying to argue for a particular position. Just this is the information that, and the yeah. sense that I'm getting from what I understand. But you've got this other side too that's saying, "Why should I pay for it? It only benefits the village, and it's the it's always the village." And I, some I, of what Joe brought I up know. about that's, it. That's why the we're in such a. That's why we're. This is a very. There's that's all that just, piece too, what? and what you're seeing is it's another, it's a topic that's starting to split the town again, and that's not cool. It's what so I'm saying. We're in a very, it's, it's a very Absolutely. tough. We're in a very it tough is. spot. Yep. No matter no matter which way we go, we're going to make yeah. a lot of oh, people yeah. unhappy. No matter what we do. Absolutely. I but think I one of the things please. actually, if I could second first, one of the things that I think we're getting really tied up in is who's paying for it, and it's not fair to me and. It kind of sounds like people are just throwing fits at this point, and what's really not equitable is that if we just want to fight about this and just have no police department, the people who are losing out are the people who are vulnerable, right? We have the people who are calling because of domestic violence. We have the people who are calling for support, welfare checks, all this stuff happening, and we're just going to just kind of blow it up because I don't want to pay because that's not fair, and that's kind of the part that's frustrating me at some point, too. <clears throat> I have a question. Go ahead. Has anybody figured out why there's a difference between the, the police department service and the fire department service? We don't have this question about fire, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> do we? Do we have a question about about coverage about fire department? I mean, it's part of the budget. I live out on Stock Farm Road. I don't have a question about the fire department. Why should I have a question about the police department? What's what's the difference? The they're fire both departments are they're throughout both, the town. Pardon me? There's three fire departments and they're throughout the I town. I don't care if there's seven fire departments. Why is there a difference in the perception between the fire service and the police? I don't think there should be. Well, I think two. we all pay for the fire department. Why don't we all pay there's got to be an equi equitable way to come about it. So uh, until somebody explains to me why the police guys are different than the fire guys, I'm always going to have a problem. So somebody I'm, explain it to me. The, the police don't, the police, the, we have three fire departments. I don't, that's Just let me relevant. finish, let me finish yeah. please. Okay. And they cover the entire town, right? So. East Randolph's primary for their area, Randolph Center for theirs, but they all back each other up and whatnot. Their budget is also a lot less. But the police district doesn't have the staffing to cover the entire town. They, they don't even have the staffing to cover the village right now. <clears throat> so if you want a police department that covers the same town equitably and takes those calls, your budget is going to be jacked much higher. So. If you want to take on a townwide police department, that's good, but it's the budget has to go up to about I think it's 1.3, 1.5 million for operating, and then you still have the capital side to it. So there it's, has to be an equitable way of providing police service the same way that we provide fire service. There Forget is. the numbers and the number of there funds. is there there is but there is, a, there is an equitable ability and it's already in the budget this year the budget from what I saw last week the, the general fund went on the police services to one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars from a hundred thousand dollars am I am I mistaken on that That's right. right so so that was the budget that at least the select board looked at last week 
65% of that money is paid for from outside the district. Is there $65,000 on $100,000? Is there $65,000 worth of policing that's done outside the district? And where are the numbers for that? So outside the district is actually paying for their own policing because their need, as Larry had stated, their need is much, much less. So because of that, if you took East Randolph, North Randolph, South Randolph, and the, ham and the hamlet of, uh, of Randolph Center, and you compare it to what Bethel pays for policing, because remember, they're all rural, just like, just like Bethel is. Bethel's budget is $75,000 for their constable. That that's what that that's what cover, that's yeah. what covers and so They're that's a, for so that's that's the yeah. police services that are actually needed outside the district. Well, so to say that, that, to say that we're going to get equitable service outside the district. I think your answer is to revamp the state police, but I don't know that we're going to well, get that in one that, day. But, that, but, that, but that's, that's the problem. The problem is these local communities cannot afford a level of policing service they need, which is why there is a state police. I, I guess I wasn't talking about affordability I was talking about perception and I, I don't think people concentrate that enough on the difference between police and fire that's I, I, you can work the numbers out there's got to be an equitable way of working it out but we haven't gotten past this mindset of police are bad I don't think it's a police are bad we didn't mm -hmm. get that in the committee at all it was a it was a what does that look like and what do you do and and the fact that right now the state police are your primary responders to a lot of the town. Doesn't it seem like the like police firemen are good guys and policemen are bad guys? Not always. No. I mean, isn't no. that part of it? Not to me, it isn't. Mm -hmm. Not to me, it isn't. There is an undercurrent of that, I think. And I I think there shouldn't be. Well, you know what? Maybe should have should, well, we should, should have been here. there. Knocked down that march that went to the police station there a couple of years ago. Maybe, maybe, maybe that, that, that should have been, should have been a different thought for our town. Okay. Thank you had another comment? I'm wondering why, if the, if the Vermont State Police are getting 1,100... Could, could you state your name? Please? Andrew Terry, sorry. Okay, sure. Uh, if the Vermont State Police are getting 1,100 calls for the town of Randolph outside of the village, and that compares to roughly 1,700 calls, I think Scott said, for in the village, I mean... That seems to me to demonstrate a pretty significant need for police coverage in the town. I mean, the state police might be handling it right now, but at what point do we decide as a town that you know we need to take responsibility for our own policing? And nobody wants to pay for it. Obviously, it's easier to let the state police handle it because it, you don't get sent a bill for that. But um, they can only do so much. And you know, as a town, we've got to take responsibility for ourselves. We can't expect the state police to do everything. Um, I also want to point out that the cost increases are substantially above the uh, rate of inflation. And, and I've looked at the cost uh, back in the 90s all the way up through 2020. Um, the 10 year averages have, compared to what you're, the budget you're proposing for next year, the costs over and above inflation are like 50% over what we used to spend. And what we used to spend, uh, like when Chief Molitor was here, we had 24-7 coverage. We had six police officers, a full-time dispatcher. I mean, we had a lot, we were paying for a lot more police uh, on a, um, with much less money. Um, uh, no, so it wasn't it's, much less. <laughs> no, it was a lot. The school budgets don't run on a straight inflation line either. Yeah, you but budget the, an officer at twenty-seven dollars and have to hire him at thirty-two. You've just changed the cost equation. Yeah, we because that's the golden that, rate so for an officer. That's what's built in there. Is a realistic look at what we can turnkey operate drive off the lot. Well, isn't aren't healthcare mm -hmm. costs going much higher than inflation? Ten percent in retirement. this year, and we budgeted yeah. another six and a half percent for the following six months. So, so that's what I'm saying. Yeah. These costs are going through the roof. You know, not, not these are not just normal increases, uh, and and so that's I think a big reason that people are in the village are saying we just can't afford this anymore. It's mm -hmm. just the costs are too great. So, so. I have. A question in terms of um, <clears throat> what I'm hearing is people for spreading the, cross, the cost across the whole town, but if what actually we're saying is that we're not decreasing the cost for anyone in the village, we're just making everyone in the town pay the same amount to have the, the effective 
police department <clears throat> that we need, right? About yeah. I, I haven't the, seen how much um, like it's, everyone's it's, taxes go up. No, it, no, the, it, the average if, if the, the model. Yeah, but if we did could, the whole town, if you do the whole town with eight police yep. officers, then the taxes in the police district go up as well as the people outside of the district. Right, so we're everyone else pay extra for to eight. have right. it. No, to that's not my understanding. If we go, if we go from five officers in the village to eight officers town wide then that's not gonna double our police budget. Or maybe, it, let's say it even does double it. Maybe it doubles it. 550,000. But then, like but we have three times the grand list, not twice the grand list. So the average taxes should, in the village, should go down. That's just the way the math works. It's not going works. to, because you have all the capital needs and you need a new building. But so we're, gonna, we're gonna have all, most you're gonna of have to, we have you these have capital to add needs all anyway. That. We have well, them anyway. No, because you have eight officers, you have more equipment that you need. But it's all more vehicles. So do we have a model that's it's saying how much about like what that would look like if we actually were able to pass eight officers full town? We, we did for the forum try to model it out for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars home. So if you went to the full town line as seen by the committee. Um, in those budgets, you're talking about $71 is the annual increase inside the police district, and there's about a $590 increase when you're outside for that value of property. That's based on grand list values such as we know them with some average so increases baked in. That number we don't know till August, so that is a back of the envelope so idea. So if... If the people I'm hearing that live in the village are for spreading the cost across the town, and actually it just means the costs go up everywhere. equitably everywhere, is no, that I, really what that's what you're in support of? Mm -hmm. I don't, so you want I don't, your taxes just, to go up? I don't think that's what's going to happen. I don't think that's yeah. what, okay. the way the math works. Okay. I'm confused. Isn't because that what the, you just the number, the, Trevor just said the number would go up, but that's from the current small budget that we have now right. if we're going to we have to compare apples to apples if we go to the five the five officer budget that's going to increase taxes substantially in the in the district and then if we go to an eight member budget from there that's not going to increase the the police department three times in cost but we're going to have three times the amount of grand list to pay for it but we're also going to have higher needs, too, because we're going to have right. to have more cruisers we will, or any Right, but not three money. times as much. Well, we're going to have a lot of gas money increase, right? Well, it didn't scale out the same way that there's some dispatch. There's the workers' comp cost change, the retirement cost, but there was also equipping each individual officer. We're covered up to a certain point, so when you look at going from right. Scott 2 and, and plus 2 to 4, we have some extra equipment that we purchased during startup that covers some of that. But you start to scale it out from there at, I forget what it was, Scott, three or $4,000 an officer just to equip them that then plays itself across the remaining five officers or whatever it works out to be in terms of the equipment. So it's a small example of how it scales out a little differently before you get to that. When we did look at it for the forum, we did look from current to each of the models. And so inside the district, it depended. It was anywhere from 560 to on the existing district with that eight hundred and almost sixty thousand dollar budget, which were less than as we described here, to that seventy one dollars in the townwide model and it goes from zero basically from current to five ninety outside the district. Because you don't start to flip the cost equation until you get to the townwide one. None of that model the extra twenty five thousand dollars that's in there. So this is a point in time from the end of November. So just as we get a little <coughs> fuzzy, because numbers have already been used fuzzily tonight in magnitude, there's some point in time differences here. So just want to point out that that's where we were at with some thinking in November. We're on January 18th, two weeks away from when we have to warn town meeting. So some of why, if I seem a little stressed out, is you're <laughs> taking me down to the very wire with both the language, the budgets. There's stuff that we have to do internally to make sure that we're ready <coughs> and we hit all the legal markers. So you have a limited amount of time to pick whatever path we're picking for fiscal 25. That clock is running out. Can I just make one more quick comment? Yep. Um, well, first of all, I'd like to express appreciation because I understand that it's a complex issue and has lots of moving pieces and 
you know, implications that Trevor just talked about. Um, I just wanted to reiterate, I mean, I, one of the reasons that I'm in favor of townwide is that it puts the police services on par with all of the other townwide services that we have. Recreation, the library, you know, the roads, everything else. Um, and I don't think it has to do with where the calls are coming from. I would argue that if you live in East Randolph, you benefit from there being a police presence in the village where you might come and shop or you know, go use the library or whatever. You want it to be safe here as well as everywhere else in town. So you know, it's, it's not like a fee-for-service model you know, like the water and sewer districts where, you know, literally you're paying for what you're using. It's very different. And I mean, we're a great example. You know, we've lived here for 28 years and I don't think we've ever called the police. So I don't think it really, where, where you live and where the calls are, I don't think that's the point. I think it's a townwide benefit and therefore it should be paid for townwide. And I understand the complexities. Last thing I would say is if it's going to stay as a police district budget at this increased level, I think there will need to be some very good public information to support that because I have not heard in the I haven't this is the first time I heard that we're driving the 99 Corolla with the engine light on, even at two additional officers. So I think that really need for people in the district to support that budget, that should be explained very clearly why that is needed and what it's paying for. Because I think it will be a hard pill to swallow, especially because I think a lot of people thought that we would be going to townwide this year. I don't know so. that there was ever a timeline or a guarantee of townwide. I, I understand I that. I'm just saying what I think the perception that, was that that's where we were headed. I would also say that if you feel like it should be like the rec program and the library than some other towns ought to participate in it and I don't I think there's a large contingent of this town that doesn't like and doesn't feel like those services are townwide we don't live where we can walk there's no way to get kids there and there's an added cost for some of those but, but families see, to participate I, but I, I also don't live somewhere where a third class road needs grading by a $75,000 I'm throwing that number out there. I don't know the exact cost, but, but by a $75,000 town road department greater either. But I'm happy to pay because I'm a member of this town. And so I, I think that, you know, I chose to live in the village. No conflict mm -hmm. of interest involved. Um, somebody else chooses to live in a rural part of the community where we have to maintain their roads as part of our obligation as a town. But Everybody, we maintain you know, yours too. Wh what? We maintain oh, yours yeah, too but, and the but, pavement. You know, right. Paving it's more sure. expensive well, I mean, than grading it. I'm outside of the village and the state, you know, maintains my state route that Same I live on. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, but yeah. what I was going to say, I mean, I don't want to complicate things, but like I live outside of the village. I would. I guess going to what this gentleman was saying, I would be willing to p maybe not have it increase my taxes the same because of and the cert like is was it looked at to like look at a way that townwide there could be a contribution to pay to like a fund and then the <coughs> district not change the size. That's kind so of that the model we're general, in right now. It's a general fund. With the general we, fund line well, item. Well, sort of. I mean... I mean, no, I'm we, saying, like, I'm yeah, not no. contributing, extra, like, $100 we're, instead of 600 and I don't feel like I need to have the district expand. Right, so the model... And then we we're still in, have state police. Yeah, no, I, th I think I you're mean, making just, a really good point, and I think that would really could really help this conversation if we could explore some of that idea some more. Right now, we do spend 
out of the general fund a small amount of money for... I mean, I know Trevor for, hates this. It's been... for, for the police, right it's now it's off. proposed... <laughs> the budget proposes $125,000 from the general fund. Right. Um, one, that's a pretty small amount of money compared to the whole budget. The other problem is that is that a third of that money comes from the the police district. So who are already paying. Who are already paying for the rest yeah. of the budget. Exactly. So we'd have to figure out I'm not sure we this is another like whole conversation. We're not gonna I don't think we're gonna figure this out right now. But the idea of potentially having the general fund pay more into the police district somehow. I, I think I'd like to hear more about how that might how that might work. And the other thing right now is that it's it's basically a fee for service model we have now where we're estimating how much the police in the district are serving people outside the district and that's where that number is coming from. Still being paid for a third of it from folks in in the district. Um, and what, what what you're saying is slightly different, which is it's not based upon how much people are using the service outside the district. It's just we want to Right. Help. I mean, to me, that's paying for the equitable services of the community. I mean, it's to right. what I hear from, you know. What is that number? I, I don't, I mean, I don't know. And we don't have, I mean, we don't have time to figure it out, but. Yeah, I mean, it's at a certain level something known as a hydrant fee. And you'll see it. It will come into play with proximity to a hydrant. So you might be outside of fire service area, but if you're within X hundred feet of that, you might pay a fee to support that. What I don't know off the top of my head is if you could charge a hydrant fee out to the town boundaries for some level of baseline contribution to service, absent a charter provision that enables it. Um, but I think this is where we went with that conversation early on in the yeah. piece was could you set a varying rate and that's where we got, I think we got, didn't we get the feedback that that was very calm, very hard to do and you were, yeah, and there's, we were kind of setting it into two zones and. And there are some charter provisions we probably need to enable us to, to vary from the one. And that seems more rate. complicated. I mean, I'm thinking like if it was a line in the general fund and then, uh, you know, they're kind of two different budgets for like the overall service versus the actual like district. Yeah, what we've talked about is building it out along the Woodstock model lines, where you have the police department belongs to the incorporated village, so you have a district in which those district owners pay for. The village residents are also residents of the town, so they pay town taxes. So in that very same model, they pay a percentage of that town outside the village policing. Mm -hmm. They've tried to tie it to some level of service with ours, um, cruisers. We have the capacity to replicate that model based on recent hires. Um, and finance, eh? You know, Zoe's familiar with that from her tenure in Woodstock. So when we think about fiscal 25 and that amount, and also where we go for 24, that's where we've been driving at because we have a a model to follow. And then we can say, you paid this, you got this for service based on these needs, while still having some flexibility to deploy limited resources where you need them. And so that's been the thought in terms of how we shape the existing payment for service into actual service. So going a little further, when we were talking about how to fund the additional officers needed because of the demand of the school, if they brought a resource officer in during the summertime, it's not a lot of demand at the school. They could help with some of the other pieces out there. Um, and then you could get into that. We were saying, like, if you have $100,000 outside of the district, uh, then we talked about maybe some contract services with a couple of the neighboring towns that would actually fund a position that could do some of the stuff outside of the district and bring in some revenue by, you know, Bethel's asking us, Brookfield's been asking. But, but wouldn't those people have to go serve in those communities? We wouldn't get the benefit of having them in, in our community. You would because they would be here also. So you wouldn't get 100% of a position, but you might get 80% of it in your town. But what it, well, and whatever and what percentages I'm hearing of, is that's okay. Like we still have support from the state police if the district doesn't get bigger. It's more equitable because people outside of the district are just paying to keep 
the village safe and to have a police, you know, like to have the service mm -hmm. within the town and available if needed. So, it's a way to help fund it to so yeah. keep the right. actual entity up and running. It's right. how do you bring in other revenue sources to right? So can we can it. we increase the general fund line item for police for Randolph Police without tying it to a certain level of service outside the district outside the police district? Right. No. I don't think you can, and that's where we got into that legal opinion. I don't remember because it's having this conversation before. The district, I thought the reason we got away with the 100000 was it was the outside part of the town was contracting with the village mm -hmm. to provide that service for them. And so Scott's been tracking hours and the time they've been spending outside of the village, and that's how we're drawing down on that money. I don't think you can just say, here's $500,000 from the general fund to go to the police district and just hand them the wad of cash. It's got to be. I would be, like to know that for sure. We want to make, at a minimum, we want the connector to service, so cost for service. And so that's what we've been trying to figure out how to make um, happen. Hence the reference to the Woodstock model where the hours are tracked mm -hmm. and it's. Right, but, but that doesn't help lower the per capita costs in the district. Right. So what, what we're talking is there about a way is trying to, not to lower have the... it be like cost for service. It's not cost for actual service. It's a... S but your challenge is as long as you have the police department that's formed under that merger document. Is this, Trevor, is this something that we can ask the municipal attorney? We, we can, and some of it, though, is also, I mean, there's a larger policy question play. You'd be creating a $200,000, $500,000 line item in the general fund that doesn't equate to anything that you get back from a level of service. Everything else we do in there is driven at providing service to everybody who's covered. Well, so there's you, a little bit of a difference. It just depends there. on what you, how you define service. I mean, right now, I think people who live outside the district are getting police services for free from inside the district because the value of having the police in the district is not tied to people who just live in the district. It's, it, it supports our downtown, it, it allows our businesses to function better, it supports our hospital, it supports our schools. These are town-wide values and so... But there's a payment for that service in 24 in the form of that $100,000. No, that $100,000 is for police services that are outside the district. That's what I'm saying. That's the connection point to the general funds. But what... And what, they're also used... Right, so, but too. I'm saying something different. What I'm saying is that when you're saying that if, if, the, if the money comes from the general fund, that the folks outside the district have to get value for that money, what I'm saying is they would get value for that money. Right now, they're getting the benefit, they're getting value from police services in the district People, let me start again. People in the police district, mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I didn't mess it up. People outside the police district get benefit from, pol from the policing which happens inside the police district. Yeah, right yeah, now, yeah, Joe, I'm not done. Sure. Right now, <laughs> those people get those services for free. When they're provided no. inside no, we don't. the district? Just to make sure I'm with you, Larry. We have it down. Services. I'm talking about the services that happen inside hey, the district. Just a second. Let me all the services, all the the serve the police services that happen inside the district, are paid for by the people in the police district right now. But the benefits of having a downtown, the benefits of having a hospital, the benefits of having Clara Martin and the schools, are, I mean, they're townwide. They're they're beyond townwide. Really, they're they're region wide. We're the hub for the whole region. We can't do anything about outside of our borders, but we can at least do with the inside of our borders of the town of Randolph. The whole town of Randolph benefits from having a commercial district, from having those goods and services. Right now, that benefit extends to people outside the district and they don't pay for it. They get it for free. And all I'm saying is, if the general fund then were to pay for part of that, now they wouldn't be getting it for free anymore. They'd be paying for services that they're receiving. I know you disagree, Joe. We're not going to come to an agreement on this, but that's what I think is really the case. No, you're right. Larry, Joe, hang on. Whoa, whoa. I want to make sure so, I you have comments directed through the chair and be a little bit more civil than yep. people. Um, so when we look at, at those benefits, though, how do we quantify those in a contract? 
We well, can. Well, but that's what you've got to be no, able to do. I mean, there, all these, these benefits aren't quantifiable that way, though. But that's what you've got to do. No, I'm saying, I'm one, what I'm saying is I'd like to hear from the municipal attorney well, that's about what whether we us. have to quantify yeah. them. Because as, as, as far as I'm aware, we haven't had that question settled from, a, from our legal counsel yet. I, I've got a nice conversation scheduled with Mike here, so I, I think I've got your question. I'll add it, and we can see for <coughs> next time. Essentially, what the question boils down to is, can the general fund pay for a contribution to police services inside the police district and not run afoul of articles of merger or any other statutory yeah. prohibitions? Because it's a little different. I was starting when we were talking, thinking about services outside. Right. So we were... Now I think, I, is that essentially the question? Yeah. yeah. Did, yeah. did the services, um, police services committee look at the Woodstock model in the context of whatever the merger agreement was, however many years ago, between the village and the town in Woodstock? Because it seems like they've figured it out. I had the same thing in Essex before they had the separations. You had yeah. the town-village dynamics. A little different, though, in terms of at some point there was an exchange in terms of who owned the police department. Yeah. And flipped the Because they just off. hired a new chief. They just hired a new town manager, too. And, 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 he, and he landed into the chief pleasing. Uh, not, not that I'm suggesting. Uh, but, um, I, it, you know, it just seems like they've figured it out. Um, and I don't know. I don't know how this compensation works. I know it exists because I spend a lot of time over there writing about Woodstock issues. But I just don't know. So our focus was the reverse because you had. It was on how are the services provided outside of the village, and how do they account for that time cost? Split mm -hmm. that out. How do they sort out car all of those pieces? In their cases, you know, dedicating a car that. Apparently sits there for a good chunk of time. But, but they're they're town wide though, right? That's no, they're the village, the village. But they have essentially a contract for service where they keep right. track of those hours the, to provide that the, coverage. The police department is officially known as the police department of the village of Woodstock. The villi village of Woodstock trustees hire the police chief, and the police force are employees of the village of Woodstock, which then bills and the, the town this, of Woodstock. Do the state police cover outside of their village like they do here? I think they may provide gap overnight coverage yeah. like they do for us and for others, but I don't know to what extent. We didn't really dig into mm -hmm. how the state police fit. We were more concerned with how do you take a district are they, service and cover? No, they they also have more they're, but, they're, but they're still a village, town, like municipal split, right? Mm -hmm. they're, they're two separate municipalities, essentially, the, the village there and the, and the surrounding town. Everybody lives in town. Some people also live in the village. Right. So it's kind of like ours, then? It's very similar to ours. I, um, I don't believe the state police are primary in Woodstock because they've created that contracting relationship Mm -hmm. uh, for coverage, so I think they're just providing the gap and the extreme so, case so backup. So it would really be the same as if we just went town wide with our police department. No. No. How is it different then? It's a more limited contract-based footprint. Would right. be the difference. I don't know whether that's on a per call base. No, sorry. Okay. <laughs> whether that's on a per Get out there and run that greater Tom. I was, just, yeah, I, I was just playing, you know, nervously. Um, uh, I don't know whether that's on a per call basis. I mean, I. I understood it to be a number of hours per year kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And they based it on that, and they had some equipment and other pieces factored into it. A uh, separate car set aside, so we would incorporate in the model how to build <coughs> one of the cars. I don't think we'd go buy a car just to just come drive in, step out of one cruiser, get in the other, and go up the hill and come back. And I, I mean, don't it know just... that you want it on a call basis either, because well, there's no, a certain I... amount of patrolling <coughs> and just being present. I'm not that suggesting that. I just, I'm saying that I don't yeah. know how they. No, I was just saying, like, if we're going down that road, we would but... want to be stuck in a call basis. It just seems like a way to maximize capacity, like, right? Like, we could then approve what the current police department needs in this budget that's being proposed, keep support from the state police, 
in the rest <clears throat> of the town. To increase that, if you could, you mean? To, to increase, increase the, the general, general fund, fund payment? Yeah. At a smaller, and right. it's and then it's a smaller increase for. In the well, 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 increase for outside, a little bit of a decrease for inside. Yeah, I mean it could just be that, and then incrementally could be. As we grow, grow. Yeah, the amount to be raised, it, get, it can get a little wonky in this year for two of the reasons we've talked about the reappraisal piece in terms of trying to figure out the impact. But if you remember the general fund budget and taking the auditor's recommendations, it looks like we are raising. We took that revenue out for that debt service payment, or the expenditures out, we also took that revenue out. So we filled it with some of our other staffing needs. So we've already got a healthy amount to be raised by taxes in there to make up for that difference. So it's just being, there's an impact, it's just where are you comfortable with it landing, I guess, is sort of the point. If you take that number somewhere, if you can. But I've got three or four things that Mike and I are going to have to I'm gonna do school drop off tomorrow. Maybe I can see him. While we're walking around. I usually run into him. If it's warm, if not, I'm gonna call him later in the morning. <laughs> still but you'll be calling him. Call call yeah. You'll be calling. <laughs> I'll just get him it's, to climb it's in winter. with you. Go for a ride. It's winter still. I know, but like 15 yeah. comfortable. It's four, you're starting. Oh, you're harder. You're, you're <laughs> hardier than I am. <laughs> I would like to say one th question that keeps coming up is where are these numbers coming from and why are you coming to these conclusions and a big part of that is Scott and what his experiences is and mm -hmm. I have not talked to anybody in this town who does not respect everything Scott does and so I think that if everyone wants to know where these things are coming from it's coming from someone who knows what he's talking about and is actually doing the calls um, all the questions of is this really real is this really happening Scott knows what he's doing and so I think that'd be something that I'm going to start saying to people when they ask that this is where it's coming from. His dedication and those extra hours he's putting in are papering over what you would otherwise see as impact. Sure. I mean, that's yeah. the short version of it. Yeah. Yeah. It's not just made up because we want to put numbers down. These yeah. are real information that Scott just needs to get by and to do what he knows needs to be done for our community. But I believe right now he's on salary. He is on and salary. All of this overtime that he's working to carry the weight. Well, is... that on in addition to it, yeah, absolutely. But I guess like people just keep being like, "Is this really? Do we really need the police? Are there really <laughs> calls? Like this is somebody who everybody loves and respects in our community is saying this is what I need for my department and this is what our department needs. It's not just made up. I guess it's just adding some validity to the numbers and. But I think just saying that because Scott said so is, I think, I, I hear what you're saying and I respect what Scott do, is doing very much, but I think it needs to be more detailed than Scott says he needs this. It is a lot more detailed. Okay. But yep. that's, I'm just, but, I want, but, I want to just clarify that. But you, you, everyone wants to take the, any data point that you give or the unknowns, right? And so we have this number from the state police and we know the state police are saying this is the need outside of the town. Um, and then we have questions like, well, how much is that actually on the interstate? How much of that's actually, how much of this is really serious? I have, and like all those questions. So whatever you want to do with that data, you can do or whatever perception. But that's like people who are actually doing the work right now are saying this is the need in the community in order to do the things that are just the bare minimum to keep our community safe. We need this money and we need these officers and we need these equipment. I think one of the things that might be helpful to pull and make available are those schedules that the committee looked at because they show it in color-coded goodness with officer numbers assigned how you cover that period of time between 0800 and 0200 the next morning. Last year we had some stuff published on the website too for information. Yep, it's all still, we left it up there as sort of an evergreen. Is there any additional things that we could pop up there too as like more detailed? I think for this year for the budget, we might look to augment with some of the stuff the committee's looked at. I think this schedule in particular shows how four officers are deployed across seven days and what that means for hours. Yeah. yeah. I mean, some of it's not really tangible, like having conversations with SafeLine and what they do. It doesn't always translate into hard data, you know, and that's, it's really hard to quantify a lot of this stuff, too. 
But some of it doesn't always involve law enforcement either. So some what we had yeah. to weed through was the need of an organization and then figure out how much of that sifted down to a law enforcement role. Yeah. And then it's also like predicting the weather though. So if we have, we're the number one call for safe line, for example, um, out of the towns they offer um, their services to, and not all of that is law enforcement, but some of that could be law enforcement too, or the trends could change and it could go way up or it could sure. go way down. And so like, you know, like, a lot of it is so hard to really predict. I guess Absolutely, and that's, that's why I think doing this incrementally, which is what this proposal calls for, even though it's not ideal for everybody. Right. You know, I understand that. I understand that John's and, and Ann's objections, and I, I hear Larry and I agree about the equity of town-wide policing, but we can't wave a magic wand and get there overnight. We've got to do it incrementally or we're going to burn our current force out. We don't have the dollars to do it. Yes. I like this idea of three months, six months down the road asking a town meeting if we want to expand a certain amount and then you know, honestly, pie in the sky, my, my best of all possible worlds would be to have a regional police department in collaboration with maybe Brook, you know, Brookfield Braintree. I Bethel. got a meeting for you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got to get Clayton stuff, you know, essay done first. Uh, you got your petition in already? No, in fact, <laughs> I haven't turned it in yet. So, uh, well, then never mind. I don't have a meeting for you yet. <laughs> um, I, I, I just think there, there, there's a lot of conflicting opinions. There's a lot of conflicting interests here. We're not going to make everybody happy. We, we, we need to approach this in a thoughtful, incremental way, and I think this is a starting point. Uh, and, yeah. I, and I, I will go on record right now as saying I am a firm believer that where we ultimately need to arrive is at a town-wide police department. But I don't think we get there overnight. Yeah, well, I came into this wanting town-wide, too, and I still do. And that increases my taxes, so conflict of interest, whatever. Um, in the opposite direction, I would be happiness. more than happy to pay more taxes to have a town-wide. Um, I think the problem is been doing so right now this year we're gonna we're gonna burn it down to the ground yeah it's too complicated we need to do this step by step so we have scott wanting to jump in on this conversation oh, oh scott raise his hand go ahead scott How polite. thanks guys no i i didn't you guys are having great conversations and one i want to thank you guys all the way around you are already talking about things that i was just going to talk about and i just want to echo tom that you know i I am all about a townwide police department. You know, I think that's the ultimate goal. Logistically, you know, currently where we are right now, it just, it's not going to fly. And I'm to only talking on a department level. Um, you know, if, and Trini has said it, you know, that say uh, July 1, we go townwide. We now are the uh, primary law enforcement entity for the town of Randolph and only have three guys it's just it's impossible to do and and i agree with tom I, I think incrementally i think this will work um if we just if we gotta take it smart we just have to be smart about this and but i want again i want to thank you guys very much um everything that you guys are talking about or is exactly what i'm thinking so i appreciate that thank you guys and Scott, some of the logic behind adding the officer starting in January is because it is so challenging to find an officer, right? We anticipate well, it's going to it, take you quite a while. Right. To, so, although we got a good lead on one. It's not like I'm, you know, I'm, I'm advertising to work at Home Depot. Uh, you know, unfortunately, I'm fishing out of a fished out pond. Um, and you know, you, and if there is an applicant, a qualified applicant that has no law enforcement, uh, experience in any shape or form, honestly, between startup where he, where that person passes in the application to when they are ready to go on their own takes about a year. 
that's with the full-time academy, that's with the hiring process, the full-time academy, the FTO program, uh, all the above, that officer will not be on their own for until about a year. So there's a huge, huge lag. I think there's a lot to be said for that. And I, I also think there's, and this may be a, a little bit of a tangent, but I think there's some truth to what Michael said earlier, that we look upon our first responders in the firefighting world a little bit differently from the way we look upon. And it ain't an easy world to be a police person in these days. They're on the firing line, and I don't mean that as a bad pun. Um, <laughs> They, they don't have the level of respect they're being, you know, the, the whole Blue Lives Matter movement. Um, it's not an easy world to be recruiting for police officers. It's terrible. Uh, it's, it's terrible. And right. so to think that we can somehow right. just expand to the full town and everything's going to be hunky-dory just doesn't make any sense. Part of the challenge, though, is to get a law enforcement officer that can start from the day you start them, you're paying. So your budget's gonna have to go up because you're gonna have to outpay the other people that are trying to get that person. It's, that's much. what it's into. It's you're bidding basically on that employee. Scott came out in the meeting in, in one of our meetings and we discussed pay and how we kind of equate. And he said we're at best low to mid in the range of a pay. Challenge that with the state police who certainly pay a whole lot more, who also can't get officers. Um, and, and challenge that with, with other municipalities such as Burlington or, you know, which is kind of the big side, or St. Albans uh, and, and those folks. Um, you, you, you're not, we're not even close in pay-wise. Mm -hmm. So attracting that talent when the pay rates aren't close, you know, people have their choices. Retention can be quite difficult when, mm -hmm. when, when, when the town up the road says, you know what, I'm looking for a police officer and we're going to pay him $5 more an hour. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. We're the money ball A's, not the Yankees. Mm -hmm. Scott and I will pass back a GIF or a GIF. I've never learned how to say that. That's basically from that movie. It's one of those. <laughs> yeah, it's one of the two. I don't know which one it is, but I think you know what I'm talking about. I don't know. And I don't get oh, Moneyball, at least, yeah. <laughs> uh, only the baseball fans. And That's how we have to think a little differently. We have to look for sort of the under The other piece you have to look at is, is the equity of pay within other municipal services. Well, believe me, we're looking at the... Well, I'm saying, so if you say, okay, we're going to all of a sudden pay police officers whatever the higher rate is, do you think your highway department, do you think your, do you think your fire department, do you think your other services are going to say, hey, if you can pay police officers, why can't we get a raise, too? So there's, you know, you're so, you're so you have other pieces that it actually affects. Complicated or complicated. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. All right, so I think we've hammered this one. We're kind of really? coming back around to the same topics, and we haven't even touched the highway budget yet or the capital plan, so... Um, I think we've given Trevor some stuff to look at. Um, and I do think, you know, the committee has said they, they got work still to do. So it's worth handing back some of these topics to that group and say, look at this or look at, you know, what you want to do. And we've got I mean, another week, right? Yeah, but the committee can go on from there. Like we're trying right. to figure out how do we get through this year's budget process and then what do we do from there? And, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I would say that it's not town-wide that's our ultimate goal. It's regional or having some mm -hmm. influence at some level on the state mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. what are you doing? If the state police are 40% un understaffed, what are they doing with the money for those positions? Right? Like, why are the municipalities having to raise taxes to pay for services that we're not getting because the state police are understaffed? That we're already paying for through our state taxes. Yeah. <laughs> like, why? That to me seems yeah, like yeah. where part of the, the problem is. And Absolutely. how do you know, can we access that money? Or should we be looking at how the state police are providing yeah. services also? I, mean, I, guess, I think it's though, a much. Yeah. No, you're, you're making a good point. point. My guess, yeah. though, is that. Good luck, guys. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's going to be an uphill battle, if only because they would like to be able to provide those services. And mm -hmm. so they don't want to s send us money one year saying, 
you know, oh, it's just going to be for this year, and then next year you're on your own. Like, because once you start sending people money, they expect it to. Well, keep, but they, keep coming. Then they need to get their, you know, why yeah, aren't I'm, they I'm, able I'm, to hire? I agree why with you, Trini. I'm just saying I right. think that that's you where, know, but, where that's going to so be a hang-up. Or can we borrow some cruisers? I mean, there's got to be something. No, they won't let the cruisers. We've uh, been really down that path. I really want a cruiser. I almost got Scott's giving a cruiser. <laughs> <laughs> we got two that we're going to sell eventually here when they get replaced. Maybe they can mine for us. Well, we should say thank you to Scott and goodnight if he wants to get offline. So, Scott, until next week. Yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Yeah, go get better. Working on it. No, that's an order. All right. Yeah. <laughs> the one time we can boss you around. <laughs> you must get well. Touche. Touche. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm going home right now. John's got the rest of the meeting for you. Oh, Sweet. I'm not feeling so good. <laughs> <laughs> Been hanging out with yeah, Scott. You're looking a little <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I never. Do All that right, too. let's move over to the highway budget. So I'll do kind of the same rundown, um, same setup. Should be getting used to seeing all of these different ones as we do it. So again, the tax revenue, this is the, we take all of these non-tax revenues in this case, although those everything's a tax revenue at some level, um, subtract it from the amount to be raised, or the amount of the total budget, we get our amount to be raised by taxes right there. These three right here are state highway aid payments. We've just breaking them out. We just We are just breaking them out. English can be hard. Um, into the different categories. First class roads, this is basically Main Street from about the Central Street Bridge on through as you get a little closer um, to the southern side of the hospital, I guess, about where that is. But most of our roads are in this second, third class category. Highway supplemental, we don't have. This is if we had um, different categories, if we added lanes, that kind of stuff. OSU mechanic, we have a billing arrangement with the school where we work on the buses. It's Mag's favorite portion of his job. <laughs> Except it's not. Um, garage rental ties into Details. that too. Details, yeah. Um, he always asks me if he can somehow get out of fixing the buses. He says, sure, find me 40000 bucks. And then he goes back to fixing the buses. Um, transfer station maintenance, that's just clean up around the air. Sale of supplies, um, this is everything from the gas we bill out to others to um, if we happen to sell materials. Uh, um, of any sort. Grants and aid, we've started to book this in. They've become annual. We don't normally budget for grant revenue, but the grants and aid are an annual program. We've taken advantage of them. Um, I don't know if you remember all the way back to the ARPA conversation in December. These are sort of, these are really great grants. So we can get $20,000. We match it with ours. We provide material equipment and we go out on Howard Hill or some of the others. Um, and we'll do everything from improve the road surface, crowning, ditching, stone lining ditches, the uh, culverts. culverts, headers, footers for those culverts. And the sections we did held up really good in the July storm, for example. So these things have started to already see them. And we know we're going to get one. We've already been approved for this one. So we can put that in the budget and with confidence say that that grant revenue is going to arrive. Um, they're my favorite grant, and I am known internally as the guy who just hates grants. Um, I was just noting that. I was like, yeah. he's excited. But these are actually like, done. Here's your money. Go do it. Yeah, they are so easy. This is if they were all like this, we'd have a million grants. Um, and then we do some general fund transfers for administrative and other services. Those are historic and predate anyone who's been around at any point. Um, can I ask a question? Sure. Okay. So um, our first class roads, we get revenues. I'm sorry. The yep. State pays it. State pays. Okay, that's okay. That's because your it's actually town highway state funds okay. that you get. We state sign meeting. off and certify the mileage. And so those we, we just did that. Yeah, last week we did. Right, right. Yeah. And okay. um, okay. then there's a calculation. The the legislature puts a value in, and then it's allocated by the mileage okay. across the state. Because we take care of it for Can them. Can we get a benefit for the Amtrak station? No. No, okay. but it's not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for explaining that. <laughs> I don't know. The town doesn't provide it. The town has a lease, I believe, okay. for that. But the Amtrak pays for all the maintenance and upkeep of it. So you'll see here, uh, much like with the other budgets, this is where all of our people costs are. So everything from pay to health insurance to retirement. This number's up pretty big right here. Um, we're getting a hell of a deal with this number, by the way. I just want to point that out. Um, 
And then this number's up here for a couple of different reasons. Um, one of which is that we changed pay rates in June to try to retain some guys and to make it easier to recruit. That helped us out. Um, we had really good luck in finding super quality uh, individuals to join the team. Their pay rates are higher than the people they replaced. There's a 3% increase base baked in there, much like there is for just about everybody else as well. Um, and so that's why that number is up there. So we've got some, we've got a crew that is, um, uh, what's the basic way to describe it? They are incredibly capable and consistently capable. And that hasn't always been the case in terms of we can get out there, they can operate the equipment, they can operate the trucks, they can jump down from there and operate the shovel. And they do all of it and keep moving and they're a pretty fun bunch. Um, so they work together. The benefit, yeah. the benefit of that is we there's, used to have to hire a contractor to come in and do a lot of the work. Yeah. And so these grants are going further Yeah. because we're able to use our own staff and equipment to and do our, the work. Our pool of equipment operators within that, too. Like We had a couple that we would trust that could go out and do that. And now we've got multiples that can run different pieces of equipment <laughs> and are learning to do that. So we've got a lot more flexible. They're all capable. Yeah. But majority of them can already do anything and everything we ask of them to do on a daily basis yeah. and the beautiful part is they're all in their 30s yeah late 20s versus you know retirement age so we're on the good end of the curve when you look at municipalities <laughs> statewide in terms of being set up for the next 20 years say um Hopefully. and then yeah so over time just because we're fully staffed we're hoping this number will go down John, does it mean you're signing a contract for the next 20 years with us no <laughs> Thirty. Thirty. Unlike our presidential. Sorry, I'm not breaking anybody's heart, but no. <laughs> Unlike our presidential candidates, <laughs> not as far as the age spectrum. Goes. Twenty years from I now, do. we're um, going to be efficient. They're a good group of people, and they're willing to do anything. Like I said, and everything. But they make my job a lot easier. And being able to work together, working through any kind of a situation. I mean, you look at look at what we've gone through since July. You know, I mean. From mud season two weeks ago to now two and a half, three feet of snow, you know, I mean, they're they're ambitious and they want to make sure they want to they want to make this town a better place as much as I do. So it's nice to see. So yeah, it's awesome. Uh, health insurance is another one. Um, this is again, this is more about change in plans in terms of employee mix, um, bringing folks on who are on two person single plans where we had buyouts, family plans. So that's a little bit, plus those increases that we've talked about a few different times. Retirement, this is tied to <coughs> these numbers up here. Um, and so at 21.4%, we contribute quite a bit. And then again, same thing with our workers' comp rates based on what we got back from VLCT. It's based on these <coughs> payroll numbers times a per 100 percentage. What we do at the end of the year with all these, so we try to budget really conservatively, we'll put in those estimates kind of on the high side of things because they'll go through, do what they call sort of their workers' comp audit, and we'll get issued a credit for anything if we happen to pay in advance for stuff. So we usually make it up based on actual numbers at some point. Occasionally it gets charged to us in the next year, but we don't generally get caught that way because we try to be a little beefy on the estimates um, if we can. General insurance is here, this is property casualty. Uh, vehicle fuel, we increased a little bit. Like I said, with that new system, I think we'll have a better handle on um, how much fuel you're using and where does it go. Again, the difficulty here is if prices go through the roof. Um, but looking at five-year averages, we've been closer rather than shorter to our numbers. We've had some years where we've missed. Um, 23 is a hard one in the mix because it fell sort of in between our capability to bill for fuel usage along with the system we used to track fuel usage with its age 23 is going to look a little wonky when you see the audit there's so, no money in the aggregate that's missing or anything it's just we didn't maybe get all the costs assigned everywhere or haven't yet when we get to the end of the month and we know what the schools do, mm -hmm. and we bill them is it a do we put that revenue back into that line item it'll go into that versus... sale of supplies Supplies. Yeah. So yeah, so it's Ben Kayla, so she'll go in, she can pull it right from the system at her desk, I think, or yeah. I don't know if you have to send it down to her, and then so she can see, and we've given everybody kind of a key code, basically, and so we know who's using what fuel. 
first few bills we sent over to the school were kind of funny because they were like, oh, I, I think your machine's broken. <laughs> it's actually it's fixed. <laughs> no, I think maybe you're using more fuel than you thought. Right. I mean, they, <laughs> So we had to recalibrate it to say, oh, we'll humor you in it. I had to calibrate it twice. Twice, Because yeah. they were complaining about it. And <laughs> it is what it is. This is, how much, this is how much fuel we put in the tanks in the ground, yeah. and then this is how much how fast we lose the fuel. So it's not leaking, it's it's being burned, you know? So, but yeah, um, yeah it's it's quite a bit. It's it's crazy how yeah. much fuel we go through between, you know, the highway, the wastewater, the police, the school bus, the school, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of people that, but we still have to show what we, what we're paying for the fuel for the whole year. You, you know what I mean? So regardless of how much, you know, they reimbursed us, so. There's a lot of fuel. I, mean, I just had 10,000 <coughs> gallons put in the ground, and it'll be gone in two weeks, less than two weeks. So. Do so you think we can make it with some of these basic materials here? We've increased culverts in recent years. Some of it is also some of our culvert work. We got a few replaced post July storm event. I mean, that accelerated the process a little bit. We were able to go up at least one size. Um, mm -hmm. Some of it we get through the grants and aid project, some of it we'll get through if we do gravel road resurfacing. So we pick these up as we go. So this is sort of a general line, but a couple of years ago we, we inched it up. We could probably inch it up again. Gravel, we're leaving it where it is. We use our gravel road reserve um, for a lot of these different things. You'll see again, with when you look at 24 in particular and we get farther out into the audit, that number is going to spike because that's where we paid for a lot of the gravel for storm response, but we'll also see a FEMA reimbursable that offsets that amount too, so it'll, it'll wash itself out. Um, and then it's pretty vanilla all the way state, straight through. Um, we're excited to have a crew that can get out there and get after it. Um, kept equipment rentals the same. Um, <coughs> just to see, we've generally rented what, the excavator's been prime, the primary piece of equipment. You know, we talk capital a little bit, it's not in for 25, but one of the things that we do want to talk about sooner than later is we've got a backhoe that we share with water wastewater. What we found through storm response, through the ditch work we're doing, through the grant work we're doing, all the water quality stuff, ditching even as a regular maintenance thing, some sort of rubber tired excavator actually might be a better option for us, more flexible, and greatly both improve the quality and speed up the work, especially when we're talking about the ditching and some of those projects. That's not something Chris needs, so we might s split him off and get him something smaller to dig with what they need because the backhoe is a little bit bigger than what they usually need. And then if they have a big one, we've got an excavator and an operator we can send down, and, and the guys all work really well together. So as we think capital, not necessarily for 25, but at some point those are the places we want to go from an operating standpoint. How old is the backhoe? <sighs> Yeah, I'd ask. I don't, I think it's... Well, is it old enough grant. that we could get one of the diesel grants? I, I think we could. It's, it's, it's probably it's, I think it's. I think it's a little newer than that, the loader in the village, the cat loader. But it's... it's five. What's that? Cat in the village is a 05, right? Yep. So, um, it, it definitely is in that ballpark where we could do that. So I just think... I mean, for what we do on everyday work, the backhoe just is, it, it works fine when you need it in emergency, but for as far as like ditching and culvert repair, it's efficient. just not, it's, for the amount of dirt roads and the amount of roads we have in general, you know, a tracked excavator is nice when you need it, but you need to, you need to pay for, either you got to pay someone to haul it, you know, so you got to move transport there and from, you know, a rubber tire excavator, you can drive literally from the shop to wherever you so be want to work and then drive it back for the day, you know, so, um, the transportations, you know, you so you cut that out of the cost, and mm -hmm. um, so and you're more flexible on how you use it. You, too. you can right, you, I mean, right? You can because you don't have to wait around for somebody to come and get it. You're just like right, right. I mean, I don't know if I'm going to need it for four hours or six hours, and you just. But then you can also, you know, I mean, we have quite a few paved <clears throat> roads as well that you know the things that need to be, you know, upgraded and you know redug out and whatnot. And rubber tires, you can literally dirt pavement. I mean, pretty much put it anywhere you want besides down over a bank, you know, so, um, but if you need something like that, you know, if we needed to do that, that's when the equipment rental comes into effect where we could go and rent, you know, the proper machine we needed for the job, so. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I do, I think that would be very wise and a good investment for the town in the future, is a rubber tire excavator. Nothing, nothing huge, I mean, it doesn't need to be small. You need to be able to, you know, pick up blocks and, you know, certain type of material, but definitely, 
would be something to look into. Cool. Yeah. So highway maintenance admin, this is pretty much all the mechanic. We split it out differently for a variety of reasons, not the least of which is that it makes it a little bit easier to build a school for their share at the end. There's no real change. Um, the wage adjustment you see is a little bit sort of goes back to those June adjustments that we made for everybody. Um, and then health is just regular plan increase. I don't think Reg had any change in plan. Um, he helped us out in a prior year and when he went from a family to a two, so um, we've benefited from a change in plan going the other way. Here, just some basic material supplies, small tools and equipment. Some of this is to help us outfit the Randolph Center garage with all those <coughs> small tools and equipment. So we might be able to take care of other things if for some reason we have staffing issues or we have other needs or we're just that busy. Um, make sure we've got enough to get the job done. These orange lines that you've seen, you probably hopefully remember them from last week when they're in the general fund. This is where we've talked about with the auditor's recommendation. There was a section of transfer out where these appeared, where they went into the highway fund, out of the highway fund, then they went into the general fund and got paid out of the general fund. Now they're converted to debt service payments because that's what they are, and they come right out of the highway fund. Like the others, there's no net change to the highway fund. We just moved these lines from here, basically, to here. The same dollar amounts. The truck lease, this is the final year of that. Um, so when we talk capital plan and we think about truck replacement, those two trucks will come off. Um, the books here in 25 are the final payments. This debt service one is for some stormwater and other projects where none of us in this room are going to see the end of that payment unless we work a really long time. There's like another 28 years or something on that one. So, um, and then the administration expense, so, you know, because we handle all kinds of stuff through finance. That's usually when you see those charges. That's what we're talking about is sort of finance department or town office level support for all the different pieces. Here are the reserve transfers for capital. Um, we're up a little bit in the aggregate, and some of this fits into, we talked a little bit last week, and it's been brought up in other venues. So the ones that we took down, and the one that we tried to increase, these both have healthy balances. This one's closer to $500,000, and this one's closer to $300,000 as we sit here. This one, however, we've depleted by being more aggressive with trucks and equipment because we've needed to because we've gotten so far behind through the years. So in order to catch up, we were really on it. We also had a few other things that occurred. Truck gets ruined at some point during the summer. Insurance covers part of it, not all of it. We used the reserve to kind of pay the rest of it off. So that was an extra 40 or something thousand dollars that came out of that reserve kind of out of cycle. So we wanted to boost that so that we can start to save toward equipment. Our goal would be, based on prior conversations, we do sort of a save and then pay-as-you-go approach. We're talking about trucks and equipment. So we're on a regular replacement cycle. We've got enough in the reserve. It's time to replace a truck. we we'll figure out which kind of truck, where we want to get it, best price. Same thing with the Echo Excavator. We're not there. We won't be there in 25. When we get to the capital plan, we've got to talk about a couple of trucks or at least one truck that's up there. John mentioned the rubber-tired excavator idea. As much as we don't want to use debt, if we don't use ARPA funds, basically, then those are our choices. Big increases at some point in the reserve transfers, debt, these one-time funds until they go away. And so we just have to at some point have that conversation. But we're not even thinking about that for 25, though. That would be a... Um, if we had our druthers, we'd probably try to do it all then if money were no object. Um, you'll see when we get to the capital sheets, these can all be funded. We didn't want to take the pavement reserve down because that's been a priority and we've been on a good thing. This has been augmented by prior year surpluses that the voters have directed into that. We didn't want to take the gravel road reserve down because with these increasingly variable bits of weather, doing some of these projects is a pretty good hedge, climate resilience hedge, in addition to saves our infrastructure, saves the work. So that's how we knit it out with these. We took it from the places that had healthy balances and haven't been utilized, tried to put it in there, and provide a little bit extra in that one. So there's a little bit of a change. And there's no, we don't ever budget for fund balance because that's a dangerous game. You really want me to try to predict where we're going to be in 18 months? And then, and then bet on it when we raise taxes? Uh, 
I wouldn't want to put you in that position. I don't that, think you'd want to be in it. Is that something that we've done in the past? Is that why it's on there as a lineup? I bet you we did, and I think at one point, sometimes you'll see, I don't know if Randolph fell in it, but some towns will get into the spot where, for whatever reason, over a couple of years, I don't know if they're not doing audits on the right schedule or they're trying to do their own audits and they haven't gone independent and suddenly they do the independent audit and find out they're sitting on a huge fund balance above and beyond anything they need. And so they might spend it out over a couple of years as a way to fund activities. I wouldn't doubt that at some point it probably developed because of a situation like that. Okay. Um, but if we're well, in we a normal operation mode. We used to vote on it, the reserves. It would say, you know, transfer a dollar amount. Well, we still, and, we still, and it would always be from a prior audit. Okay, but that, um, that we would but, find. Okay. Yeah, same thing. Um, so, explain just quickly back on line four fifty seven. It's a transfer to highway capital, and then it has WW in parentheses for twenty five grand. Is that the incoming transfer from the general fund that you show on five sixty eight? Five sixty-eight transfer in from the general fund. Yeah, this is a historic movement of funds. I suspect it ties to these debt service bundles, if I'm remembering right, because in some of these projects here, actually no, down here. Sorry, um, some of these projects we did combination borrowings. So we did one note. But it's 73% this and 22% that and 1% something else. Mm -hmm. I've always thought it was tied to that. I'd have to go back and look. That's not one I thought of this year. But when you look at our debt service table, we've got a few where we bundled right. enterprise and non-enterprise fund debt, which I don't. I would not suggest we try that again. <laughs> but I suspect it was to try to get the lowest interest rate possible, most favorable payments. It, I, sure it made sense in the context. Um, I will double check that, but that's, if I'm remembering right, that's the tie-in, but. When we look at the amount of capital that we have for equipment and trucks in the highway side, how does that compare to the trucks and equipment we have on the fire department side? It just looks to me like we put more money aside annually for fire department reserve than we do highway reserve. and mm -hmm. But it feels like we have more equipment and trucks on the highway side. How many trucks do you think you got overall? We have seven dump trucks, three pickups, well, uh, one, you know, 550, three pickups, and then, uh, you know, then, uh, that's just the trucks. Mm -hmm. Not counting the sterling that's kind of in reserve, or? Uh, that's, that is kind of in the sterling. Sure. You know, but then, you know, the <laughs> equipment, then you go, you go <laughs> equipment or just trucks along? <laughs> Do the equipment real quick, too, if you and Two graders. Two graders, street sweeper, backhoe. Um, uh, sidewalk class, machine. <coughs> um, three bucket loaders. Good sidewalk machine. But, yep. Yep. You know, I think that's answering the question, right? Like, we have nine fire trucks, which I think is more than a town our size needs, but like nine fire trucks, and we're putting $100,000 in reserve, but we have all this equipment and, and highway trucks, and our reserve number is much lower than that. Yeah, I think it's 110 for the fire this year and 100 for this, and this is after we increased it by 20. And it's exactly why we won't catch up at this rate. We'll never get into that pay-as-you-go model without some kind of intervention, big increases, miracle funds, changes in technology, <laughs> self-driving dump trucks. <laughs> Self-grading roads. <laughs> yeah. We were joking around the other day that we were talking about putting radiant heat up and down Main Street there, and how we won't have to worry about the sidewalks or the, or the roads. We'll just adjust the thermostat. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, if you were to ask me sort of long-term financial planning, what's our area of weakness, <coughs> our highway fund budget, it's in the um, 
than that equipment transfer. Like at some point, the good times are going to end with the pavement reserve, with the surplus from the prior years, in which case we'll start to get a little squeezed if we don't anything with that number, especially as the asphalt costs go up per ton. But we're probably a couple of ways years away from doing that. And at that point, we'll be all six years through the six years that we laid years. out together. So we laid out a six-year plan, and this year, I mean, we've done everything as far as pavement-wise that we've talked about and wanted to do. So. Um, I know we have a list of what we want to pave this yeah. summer, but I don't know what off the top of my head. We've made a lot of progress <laughs> on paving, and but compared you know, to where the, we were a few years ago, like we're we've really done a lot. I mean, there's still a lot to go. Don't get me wrong, but I mean, we've made leaps and bounds, you know. And I just if we can keep pushing forward, you know what I mean. And eventually, they will all be you know repaved within a certain amount of time, and then they'll be much more you know manageable, you know maintaining and you know, moving, you know, just if there's something we need to do, but like I said, we were talking to him, you know, me and Trevor were talking, you know, the roads that we want to pave this next summer, we want to make sure the DIs are good, you know, mm -hmm. make sure everything underground is good before we pave it. So, it sucks to have a brand new road and then you got to dig it up, you know, I mean, water leaks are inevitable, you know, you can't stop that, but, you know, everything on our side that we can try to maintain and avoid. That's a, that's our goal for this year. So, you know. So we've been pretty close. I think we can, based on some initial modeling, this will we should be able to hold through 27. We might need to increase that transfer as we get into 26, with an eye toward 27, and then again there. But this is the remaining three years of the six that we'd laid out. Um, so here is the 25 amount. We're going trying to get a Class Two paving grant for Beanville Road if we can. Um, that's sort of the one in need. Those are 175. Might have moved them up to 200 thousand dollar max. Um, so that's reflected in all the capital sheets. And then there's a whole bunch of smaller ones here. So up on Hospital Hill and not too far off, sort of the Pleasant Street corridor. We'll knock a few more out. Finish East Bethel Road. That had been our hope to get a paving grant last year to do the whole thing. Um, and and that, that should take care of East Bethel or uh, Beanville Road though. Yeah. If we get that so. yeah so that would all work nice and then you know the next year we moved sort of to these we always try to mix in sort of jump around so we're not just kind of pinpointing on one part of town you know what i mean spread it out so it joy out wasn't wasn't <laughs> fairview um we paved just like five years ago or something or less it may have been we might just top it off it was one of the small ones or we may remove it from the list when we sort of laid them out we we're a little bit of co-location with some of these smaller ones <laughs> But if we don't need to hit them, then we'll take them out and move something up. So that's sort of the basic plan as it is. We've amended the plan every time when we've gone out to bid, when we've seen prices, and we've done those things. So there's a good chance that we'll um, make adjustments based on conditions when we get there. One of the things you'll notice. This is where we landed with the cost per ton last year, one ten fifty. It was about ten dollars more than we had projected, so that was a little bit of a bite. But we used that number to then sort of play these numbers out. Hopefully, they don't increase. We just assume sort of a five year or five percent per year. With some of these, we took some of these other metrics from other towns in terms of linear foot costs or where we could find them. Originally, when we started talking about it, we were going to try to mix types. Really, we've just gone with a shim and overlay program um, to try to get every road some level of treatment within a set period of time. Uh, it's been pretty successful and it's a nice entry point. If we were trying to do some of the larger projects, that would really slow us down in terms of getting that improvement everywhere. But the, the problem is, I mean, yeah, some people disagree with the shim and overlay, but, you know, like when they milled Main Street, and you guys remember last summer, with there in front of Napa, I mean, they've only milled an inch and a half out there in the gravel, you know. There's not the base, you know, mm -hmm. the base of asphalt underneath what they were trying to mill out. So what we're trying to do is create a base of asphalt so when we do need the mill to come through to give it a light mill to level the road back out and get it where it needs to be, we have that, you know. Because once a mill, once they get down to that blacktop, it's like a, it's like a dirt road, you know what I mean? Doesn't just doesn't have the structure there to support what's above it, so... So this is all paid for. We call it our capital improvement program. I'd mentioned that what I'd wanted to do 
for you is maybe set aside a three-year one rather than a five-year one. We have enough in the air with what we do with police, with some of the ARPA funds, with some other stuff. The one thing we can probably do with some level of certainty is get you one for fiscal 25 and keep building out what happens. So that's been the focus there. The green highlights are just where I took capital-related ARPA projects from the town's list and put them in there so they're all listed in one spot and show the source of funding as we scroll to the right. Um, this has everything that you've seen from transfers to reserves. That's usually what you're seeing in the general fund funding category. <coughs> Highway fund funding, same thing, could be transfers. We have a couple of debt service payments in there, the, um, the vibratory roller and a front run and loader. So this is our second of five payments there. Um, the police transfer, at some point we're going to have to talk about those police vehicles. I don't have another source of funds if you didn't use ARPA unless you want to go out and borrow for them. Um, we could lease finance all kinds of stuff. Barry Town does it as for years pretty aggressively, but once you're in the model, you're locked in the model. The benefit is that you're replacing equipment on a reliable schedule, but you've always got some level of debt service that you're carrying as a result. Um, so nothing too wild or crazy we've got in there for, you know, sidewalks have come up a couple of times. We've got the grant match. This is the 12,000 when you play this chart over to the side here. Let me see if I can do that. What's the way I've got this? You can get over to see the totals, grant funding, all of that. So this $12,000 was our 20% match of the $60,000 for that scoping study for the expansion of the sidewalks down to mm -hmm. Shaw's and down Weston. That was always a sidewalk reserve, so we've got that in there. This is for generalized repairs that we've got to identify um, for that. So anything that's sort of a larger scale, we had that in the list for 24. It makes sense to just maybe try in 25 to do something a little bit bigger. Um, and then the $57,000 here, I may have mentioned it to you last week, is something we were thinking about doing. Uh, John went out and priced out new sidewalk machines. Uh, same model that we already have. We're able to get the state price because there's something that VTrans uses. We've been pretty happy with the one we picked up in an emergency situation a couple of winters ago. The idea being that if we want to care for the sidewalks better, we're finding it's, especially with the variable <coughs> winter weather, <coughs> another machine, another operator would enable us to do that. We could also get a brush hog for it. It helps us mow the landfill. It can take all the other attachments right into the one. So we already have a broom, roadside and mower, I think, is on it too, or you can put it on it, if I'm not mistaken. So these are flexible little pieces of equipment for us. And at this cost, it's been pretty durable. It seems to be pretty easy to repair. We were buying sidewalk machines at $110,000 that broke every other day. Right. Um, and then you couldn't get replacement parts for them. These have is, been pretty sturdy. Is the sidewalk machine we have now, is it also a multiple use type machine? It's the, so the one we priced out, is ident it's identical to the one we currently have. Okay. But there's just a lot of sidewalk, you know, spread out. And I mean, we try to get to our sidewalks as fast yeah, as we no, can. No, no, I'm, know, I'm not commenting no, 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 on that. I'm just, no, I'm just I, curious about the machine we have now, whether identical. we can use it for other things also. Yep. We've got and we do. Broom. We put a broom on, like we sweep aprons, you know, especially like on approaching gravel roads, especially after the winter time. You know, um, we got a brush hog on that as well. Okay. Um, I just didn't know. That's yeah, great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Sweep the sidewalks with it. It really, really well, especially in the springtime. You know, get all the debris, everything, get them cleaned up. We'll go through, sweep the debris off the sidewalks into the street. Then the street sweeper goes down through, cleans that street up. So kind of, you know, take two birds and one great. stone. So, but I, I don't know. I just we have, like I said, it goes back to the crew we have and the people we have. More versatile, you know. And I think if we had two machines, I think we'd get, you know, the longevity out of them. But we'd also be able to cover, you know, at the same time. So right. it's just, the machine only moves so fast. It, yeah. Well, and then just depending on the, you know, the material, the snow, you know, how heavy, wet. The other day, I mean, it was moving about like that. It was just, so slow. Yeah, really it, it's, it. you know, and, it was so but I understand. I mean, I wish we could snap our fingers and boom, <laughs> clean and safe to walk on. You know, it just, but, um, yeah. Yeah, and actually, since I, since we're talking about it now, this isn't really totally relevant. But um, the the guy who runs the sidewalk plow through my neighborhood um, is really careful not to blow the snow from the sidewalk into my driveway or into the walkway. Right. Like he's really like, and that hasn't always been the case. Like in the past, we've had operators who are just like they just run it and 
you know, I'd be like, I just finished clearing the driveway, now it's full of snow again. But he does not do that, and it's, it's, it's obvious that he's really paying attention and like trying to time it just right. And it's, anyway, it's, I really appreciate the, well, the, the thoughtfulness that has been going into that. And, and I know some of my other neighbors have noticed that as well. And it's not the kind of thing you stop the operator and say, oh, thank you so right. much. So I just, I just want, he should just know that yep. it's, that people appreciate it even if no one's saying anything. And that's what we try to, you know, same as like plowing, you know. I mean, of course, when we were going around during a storm the other day, you know, the plow truck's got to put the snow to, the, you know, somewhere, right? And people are getting mad because they're shoveling their driveways, but snow truck, you know, plow truck goes by. We've adapted to, you know, like I said, new employees, new people, train them the right way the first time, you know, when you plow on the road, find the curb, you know, get over to where the edge of the road is, get them back there that way so people do plow the driveway. You don't go back through at the end of the day and put a whole load of snow in their driveway to find the edge of the road, you know, so. Unless they complain a lot, right? right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Give you something to complain about. We're, we're not, we're not. The weather's a fickle thing. It's hard to, it's hard to tell where the snow ends up. I actually have, have noticed that it also seems like whoever's driving the plow trucks um, are, are doing a better job at keeping the plows actually on the roads and not. Yes, it's. Well, you know, on, yeah, and not so. digging up. Lawn and well, right, and, and that's so, but that yeah. gets to a point too where some of the roads that we take care of with these dump trucks in town are too big, you know. Like you go up like Belfort, you know, or just some of these really small, tight roads, and you put a six wheeler dump truck with a you know 12 foot black plow in the front of it. I mean, first of all, at the end of you know, we don't have a place to turn around, we got to throw into someone's driveway, someone's lawn to back into another driveway to even turn around and get out of there, you know. I mean, so. I, I think the trucks, the dump trucks are too big in some aspects in the town, but perfect for others. Mm -hmm. So, I but think... What I'm saying is, though, people, like, it seems like that has gotten better. You're right, like, absolutely. Noticeably better that, that they're, Being they're just, they're, they're just a combination of more careful, more skillful, yeah. um, better, you know, just paying, paying better attention. But anyway, but it's just, again, it's just, it's appreciated. It's well, really nice to... Thank you. To, to see that level of quality of, of work come from the road crew, it's just really great. When you relate it to Josh and Debo and tell them there were complaints about the I sweatshirts that they wear. I will the tell them they got to have proper apparel. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> what? Why? One of them is a Yankees fan, the other one's a Lakers fan, so we make sure they never forget. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. That's, that's Celtics fans. Unaccept right the, yeah. Unacceptable. <laughs> <laughs> but no, they're, it's, they're, they're a fun group. Um, when we think about trucks too, though, like we mentioned, um, <coughs> you know, it's a spot where there's a, what do you want to, you were talking about, we were talking about a 10 wheeler maybe? So, it's like, on the horizon and then <coughs> 550. So, I, I, the current truck that takes care of the dirt roads in the village portion, you know, you got Spooner, uh, Crab Apple, Tatro, you know, Hunt, Seymour, Pinnacle on this end of town. Then you've got the couple of little, um, short dead end roads right by like Central Supplies and the, um, the I'm having a hard time remembering the name. I would never forget him until I'm like, yeah, that road. The one that um, goes like that. <laughs> <laughs> but right now, it just it's really the truck's not big enough to do the road, you know, to, uh, to carry the amount of material in the truck to sand the road, right? You know, so the dump truck has to go up to the six wheeler. He goes up uh, Tatro. He can only sand halfway, three quarters way down Tatro without hitting any of the side roads. So he literally has to go back up that road twice after he's plowed it, you know, to finish sanding it. Um, if we're gonna, you know, we have a truck that needs to be replaced, I would suggest replacing it with a 10-wheeler because he's tried it with the 10-wheelers out of the center garage just to see versus four and a half or five loads of sand, it's two loads of sand. You know, one on this end of town, one on this end of town. Mm -hmm. He also takes care of partridge, um, you know, Hollyhock, Flint, or um, LeBounty, Path, you know, so his route's pretty spread out, and I just think a, the proper truck, <coughs> the right size to haul the amount of material would be beneficial. And that smaller truck that's doing Tatro now can do Belfred? That truck, no, but he doesn't go, you know, you know that's, that's a Belfred's, like, you know, pavement truck that's in town, in the village, but we also have a village truck that takes care of the dirt roads down on this end of town as well. So we have two dump trucks that take care of pavement in the village, plus the 550. So it's three. And then we have four dump trucks that do take care of dirt. So three in the center, one in the village. 
is a 550 the right size truck to do Belford? Yes. Going on vacation in July, so we're going to start pricing trucks out now. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping it back here. <laughs> I can see it. I was like, just, truck one, yeah. uh, Trevor was on vacation last year, so I ordered. <laughs> like, yeah, let's buy it. <laughs> Sounds like we need to extend Belfort down through to South Street so they don't have to turn around. <laughs> We're game for anything. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck on him in a domain on that one. Right. <laughs> <laughs> then I wasn't pinpointing her single in that street. I was just using that as an example. If you put a road right through her house. <laughs> <laughs> you realize this gets uh, out there on TV, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm just joking, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, all five listeners. <laughs> all five listeners. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I really do, though. I think there's, you know, purchasing another sidewalk plow would be very beneficial to the town. Yeah. Um, I don't know which way we go about it. You know, like I said, we got a couple different options, but. Um, do we mow, the, or does buildings and grounds mow the wreck fields and all that? Mostly buildings and grounds, yeah. There's some overlap where we paid for the rec fields in part out of the recreation budget, but that's usually the seasonal that's appeared when it was clawed for years, for example. That appeared in the buildings and grounds budget. And so we have a separate lawnmower for that? that uh, they have, yep. or? They've got just a couple of the Ventrag mower is <coughs> nice too. They, right, yeah, and so, yeah. well, we thought, you know, just pricing it out of a couple different attachments, but like we have a finish mower that we got with the first one we bought. We get a bush hog for the second one just because you know the finish mower does do a nice job but it's just not really made for that type of grass you know because we have to mow the cells down at the dump at least twice a year you know twice a summer so um, um so this year that we have a full staff are we mowing the cemeteries on our own this year not uh east randolph and randolph center this would be year two of the bid that we went out to oh. Do we still have that contract? Same contract, same contractor. After we reset everything okay. in August, it got very peaceful and reliable. Mm, okay. Not without some difficulty or consternation, of course. <coughs> it did level out. Okay. But that is a concern. But we don't have the staff currently in buildings and grounds to take that on even. Yeah. Okay, sorry. And we were yeah. doing all of them. We had the two hybrids, two seasonals, Harold plus a seasonal, you know, with Claude doing the rec and pool stuff and then occasionally other resources. So we're down to three um, in that department, but they're all full time. And we've deployed one of them a little differently throughout the winter. Dave, so what do you guys mow then? Like you guys mow along the sides then? We do. I do all the roadside mowing. Okay. You know, so. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Good the question I had asked was on the bend track because they make oh, a nice finish mower. Could also, that be used to do the rec fields also? Another piece of machinery. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's where I started like mixing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank sorry. you. No. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the newbie, so I kind of like wants to get into it. Towards if they're gonna have two of them. You might as well use it, and it, well, it could be purchased as buildings and grounds and highways. Highways uses it when they need it. They and that's what we talked about. I think it would be pretty side. versatile for the town, you know, the town as a whole to use, you know, have the piece of machinery to, you know, use where we needed it to be used, not just necessarily be like, it's, you know, highways are going to stay there, you know, so. Um. Flexibility has been our friend. Sure. When we talk about the money ball aspect, it's how do we take two dimes and turn it into a quarter kind of a thing. Yeah, but that can go too far sometimes though too. I mean, if like yeah. they need it every day and then someone else needs it, then it's not really helpful, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, we've tried to separate those shared things that where that comes up if we can and right. or be mindful of them. But. Yeah. But the second bend track would be additional capacity for you. Mm -hmm. not replacing something right right it would just kind of mostly mess. needed for winter mm -hmm. okay when 
buildings and grounds would mostly need it in the summer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Right. Think so. so that flexibility would work in this case? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. And that's what we do, you know, in the rea reality of it, what we do is, you know, have them both through the snow blowing and stuff in the winter time, but suit one up to keep the cab on one and you know the sweeper on the other to keep the dust and the silica you know all that out of the from the operator but then take the cab off the other put the mower on it and you know and if we needed to do the same for both of them we could you know so um. cool. cool yeah Start buying trucks and mowers while you're on vacation. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what are you leaving? <laughs> I don't know, I might keep that a secret now. <laughs> oh, it doesn't take us long. We <laughs> <laughs> want to add extra additional vacation days. So got the next uh, contract just so we can get more done. Be on my way to the Cape, I'll stop and get gas. You know, call. What are you doing? And I won't be able to tell her where. You know. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm guessing all the baggage and the kids and everything would give it away. That kid's like to talk on the phone when she's talking. So yeah, that'll be a tip. Trevor, you're not. Right this isn't yours, is it? No, you're all set. Can I have one more? So the other one looks partially used, so yeah. depending on your level of daring, miss. <laughs> <laughs> I've got one back here. Well, I've got three kids. I've so. already so gotten so to spread my way anyway. So. We don't need any of the projects in there for spending authority that are FEMA based, right? No. Because they're. We just got to figure out where the match comes from. Right. And we. Um, so we have the July storm and then we have the December storm, which we just supplied all our stuff up at the state level. So, and it looks like Orange County has met the threshold. <coughs> yeah, they did. Um, although it's on estimates, so we don't actually officially reach it until we get to obligation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've got to get them some follow up. They asked today, which should be easy to grab. Yeah, and so those will still all show up when we get audited and do all that. There's a separate, essentially, FEMA account section that we've set up so the money will show up as the in out and then however we figure out we want to match it um, it would be showing the flow of, of money but because we're not proposing to use any of those general fund or reserve fund dollars at this point um, did we um, when you looked at the sites that we hit in December do we figure out if any mitigation <coughs> is going to be beneficial in those areas because um, I know all we went for was the emergency repair, but right, right. Mm -hmm. We did do some ditching. We, you know, we did some ditching and um, changed the culvert right up the couple spots up on Fish Hill, um, and we also did some on Rand Road. Just try to help, you know, drain the water, get the water, let the, allow the water to drain out of the road, you know, and go somewhere other than just sitting there and fester. So, um, but I think doesn't like wouldn't that classify as mitigation? No, that's emergency. That's emergency. Right, that can okay. hit in the emergency account, but I'm thinking, like, is there clay in the road or things like that that you could oh, get a whole new down. sub base? And, right. Uh, you know, can, in some care. areas we had some ledge and the water came up through the ledge, causing problems in the springtime. So if it was one of those sites where, you know, the damage to the road was because it was on. Mm -hmm in those conditions, clay right. or ledge or something like that. And right. mitigating it would be, you know, taking it down and putting a new sub base and building it up through. Mm -hmm. And we add that project in and ask FEMA to pay for that too. Right. Uh, but, like Tatro maybe, or see little sections of Fish Hill, or clearing out that culvert seemed to help. Like that, allowing the water to go somewhere really seemed to help a lot. Um, and then you did a little new, tried a new technique kind of thing too, where we put some larger material down, different, smaller material up top, and then fines over the top, kind of layered it up. So I mean, what I, what it seemed like what we found <clears throat> in a couple of spots is just there was like springs in the road, you know, it's just, turned to mud, you know, but also what we found is grading the roads, you know, I didn't really don't know what's in the roads from the time I started until you grade the roads enough and see what kind of material you're turning around. Um, what I've noticed a lot is a lot of the roads is if just the rock is broken down. It's just a lot of real, a lot of fines, you know, in the roads. And I thought, you know, I figured Mother Nature was kind of showing us her hand for what mud season was going to be like. So, you know, where the ruts were really bad and the mud was pretty deep. Um, I went through and put, 
you know, inch and a half stone in the roads, you know, and let the traffic pound it into the ground. And then we put, you know, inch and a half or inch and a quarter hard pack over the top of it to kind of trap it, but bind it in. So as they do thaw out, you know, the traffic will pound the, the rock back down into the ground. And hopefully as we grade it this summer, we'll mix it back in and have the rock fine ratio to hold up. So I'm going to keep my fingers crossed, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> so, sounds like a, a, an art more than a science. <laughs> it just depends on the day. <laughs> <clears throat> Any more questions on the highway budget? What we want to do? Do you need any decisions on that? Or the money's sitting there, we just got to decide what to do with it at some point. A later yeah. date yeah. when you're on vacation. <laughs> Wait till I'm on the beach, and then I'm, I'll be very agreeable to whatever you want to do. Oh, we aren't telling you. <laughs> Have you drive the truck back here? That if you want to yeah. 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 We might have some grandsons. <laughs> yeah. Other duties. Don't have smile to say that. You might back. <laughs> I heard the G word. It was a <laughs> Sorry, twitching too. Did you see yeah. that? Yeah. 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 I mean, we have a person for that now. That's true. That has helped so, me. Yeah. Deep breath. It's My great acceptance <laughs> level. So I think good, good. just from a process standpoint, we'll have another conversation. Obviously, next week you're scheduled to meet, and then if at a minimum coming out of that, if we have a sense of direction and everything, we talked about doing a town meeting morning tonight, but with the open questions on some of the police stuff and the timing and all of those things, I just tamped it back down until we've got some answers from Mike, and then we can show you maybe a couple of different versions of that. Um, but from a budget perspective, if we have a sense, it doesn't sound like there's too much that you want to get into, change, alter from the proposed budgets for, say, everything but police. That seems like that's the open question. So if that sounds fair, what we'll do is just make sure all the numbers are where they need to be, do kind of a double check, last check, and set those up so that maybe at a minimum on the 25th you get through the conversation and you're ready to adopt those budgets at a minimum. Uh, we still have February 1st, but we get to that, we're cutting it real close, if we just rely on Thursdays. Um, so we may want to consider a different date if we get through the 25th and you're still not where you want to end up. I think we can finalize it next Thursday, well, yeah. don't you? Well, I don't, yeah, I don't yeah. see anything. And then that ties in nicely, that lets us get the warning. You can adopt that, sign it, we can go through it again. Having those couple of extra days more than once has saved our bacon in terms of there's some weird little thing in there that even though we looked at it six times with six different sets of eyes, there's a thing and once it's set, there's no way to change it. So that gives a little extra time on that. And then it ties in nicely with the annual report. It doesn't have to be the printer until the 8th. So. so we have to warn the vote on the 2nd of February, right? No, I would say no later than the third or second, I guess, yeah, because the second is a Sunday. Friday. Uh, the second is a Friday. Yeah. So that's the day that we have to have it. So the second sure. function, I would say, would be the... Whew. Wow. But what we'd like to do is sort of winnow our way to that point where if for some reason you're it's not fun. settled, there's just <laughs> one set of questions. <laughs> are we going to crash and burn or not? What are we going to do? Yeah, we'll <laughs> crash and burn. You might be here awful late some night. <laughs> yeah, it's not it's not close of business. We got till midnight. We're good. Okay. Well, I've got snacks. Yeah. But yeah, so we'll I'll start to have it by next Thursday. I think so. I'll give you a week to play yep. with it. That'd be perfect. Oh, there's not that much open. Not really. It it seems like we're pretty close. In terms of the numbers, just you know, one humongous policy question potentially. Yeah. The numbers are the numbers are pretty well set. <laughs> you for that big black hole, but otherwise it's all right. Uh -huh. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, thanks for coming in, John. Hang yeah, with us. Thanks, John. Yeah, thanks, thanks, John. Bad, was it? It's been fun. You made it. <laughs> We're all set. Done. You're you're free and clear. We'll I do want to thank on. publicly thank you though for helping Brookfield. That oh, was yeah. absolutely amazing. I, and the fact that your guys showed up on their day off was even better. I, but tell me more. I don't, I don't even know if you guys have I emailed this story. you all so, <laughs> a picture. So the town of Brookfield this last weekend at the end of the storm event, um, when it warmed up, snowed, rained, um, they didn't lose one truck, but they lost all their trucks. 
just the whole town. They didn't have anything to maintain any of their roads with. They did their best they could with what they had for graders, you know, pick up and whatnot. And it obviously got cold and it froze. And, you know, they communicate from time to time just to check in on each other to make sure everybody's good. You know, I, yes, <coughs> my number one priority is Randolph, but also, you know, reach out because from what I understand is back in the day people didn't talk a lot from different you know from our neighboring towns and mm -hmm. um, they reached out and just you know they had a problem had a couple questions at first just to figure out if we could fix the truck or figure out what's wrong um, ended up getting a hold of everyone that you know works for us and I asked them if they would be willing to or had any obligation to going and helping <coughs> sand their roads because their roads were nothing but a sheet of ice you know very unsafe to travel and um, I just hope, you know, I'm, I'm glad we were able to help, so. It didn't take very long at all, but the six trucks we have in our crews, we went over and, you know, guided them and sent them where they needed to go, and so. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. I didn't see any email come through. It went out, didn't you? got it, didn't you? You were on it. Um, we got a nice photo from the select board of the yeah. up the guys. So let's see. Real quick, I don't see it, but this Can't is on my phone. Yeah. Well, you know, if I, we don't know, I thought this about it, and that's what made me kind of realize <laughs> and think about it. You know, some of these trucks that we've got have, you know, they've been maintained well from, you know, moving forward, but the amount of electrical, you know, electronics and just everything's electric on the motors. If they, you know, we go, if we have a truck go down, you know, I mean, <laughs> the truck we traded in last year for the new truck we got, we shut it off on a Friday, went back to a Monday to try to start it. We had, it's the truck we traded in, we had to put a $23,000 fuel system in that truck to trade it in. It, it just, it's a it, whoops there. <laughs> What's that? That's a whoops there. <laughs> right, but I mean, it was nothing, you know, no operator, mechanical, just, it just done, you know, so, and that's what I just, we were talking about, so just, you can't avoid the electrical problems, but you can at least have a warranty to kind mm -hmm. of protect you, you know, protect us from having to pay a substantial amount of money to the equipment failure, you know, so. So we like that five to seven mark for trucks. You'll see that as we talk trucks at any point because we can match. Five years. Yep. Because we can match it to the warranty. Just, just turn them over. You know, the, the drivers take care of the trucks really well. You know, they maintain them. Um, their appearance is very good. So you know, I think that keeps us on the higher end of you know when we turn them over, trading them in. You know, it gets us a better value. You know, I mean that <coughs> truck that we traded in was the highest the town's ever gotten. They gave us fifty-five thousand dollars toward a dump truck. But the sad part is with the, what we had to put into the truck <laughs> to get it to trade in, it really, you know, didn't turn out like it was that much money. But, you know, so, but a, a good dump truck, five, seven years old, s say seven years old, you, you know, they'll give you, you know, $125,000 to $130,000 trade in, you know, on a truck that you've dropped, that we've ran for seven years, five years, yeah. you know, towards a new one. So, <clears throat> it, the, the, the first jump is a pretty big leap, but I think after, once you start turning them over, you know, it, it's, mm -hmm. They almost take care of each other, so. And our electrical systems always stay under warranty coverage, so we don't ever have to worry. It's scary. I, I used to work on them all the time, but I look at them now, it's like, what do you, I don't even know what to do. <laughs> Ripping open a There is a diesel engine around. in there somewhere. I'm just not sure <laughs> where. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah. But. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Have a good day. Thanks. 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 See you. See ya. Um... Manager's report. I don't have anything to add other than I owned a 98 Corolla, not a 99. God damn it, get your Just to clarify. <laughs> I got that, Sorry, yeah, this is a long story. Sorry. Oh my, my apologies for getting a little face. <laughs> um, executive session. Um, I don't have anything for you. Um, do we I, need to go th there to talk salary? Yeah. Information for employees. Well, for me. <laughs> well, for employees. Yeah. That too. I was like, we covered everybody. I was like, we covered everybody. Um, yeah, I, that would be where you do it. Yeah, I think we should go into Go Hip. 
I would like to move that we go into executive session for the purpose of um, personnel salary discussion. Three under and three thirteen. Hang on, I'll get it up here. Three thirteen A something. One of these days, I'll have that memorized. It's uh, a one A probably contracts okay. under under that. <laughs> It's such great prose. I mean, it's so under that. <laughs> so, Tom, executive session for that. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We are off.